respect trans kids, affirm trans rights, stand with Ukraine, Black Lives Matter, trans visibility is valid. Gaming. I'm just gonna say it, since you're talking shit about me with your big fucking ugly mouth, you're all hateful fucking racist bigots. Fuck you and fuck your fucking podcast. <laughs> I just can't do it. I can't. This shit no more, man. Yo, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully everyone had a uh, good weekend. Oh, shit. Speaking of which, fair warning. I may have to go take a shit at any given moment. Just a heads up. But yeah, I saw they added this to this game, so I thought I would try it out. Bro, I've been like clogged up for like the past couple days and the dam has bursted, let's just say. <laughs> so yeah. I ain't trying to mess with the success right now, so. Would I agree that Drake is the most versatile artist of our generation? I have no idea. What do you mean by versatile? Uh-oh. Yo, I think that time may be now. All right, shit, literally. I will be back. Give me a few minutes. I'll be in the chat though. This should not take long. The others have not. So I'll be back in like two minutes probably.
Just enter maintenance mode and begin charging soon. Majesty is the nickname given to Victoria by the crew.
All right, guys, I'm back. Holy shit, dude. Literally. That was fucking horrible. <laughs> dude, damn. I thought I was done twice and it just kept on coming, bro. I don't know. Jesus, man. <laughs> Fuck, man. Oh. Oh, that was not a log, man. I would describe that more of like a uh, mudslide. Dude, I probably lost at least like four or five pounds tonight. Like, I'm not even joking. I've been blocked up for like a week, pretty much. And I've been like pounding fucking Miralax and like lemon juice and like vegetables. All sorts of shit. For like the past week. Trying to make some progress and tonight the dam bursted. So earlier was when I laid the logs. Now it's the, uh, you know, aftermath. But, yeah. Shit, dude. They don't sell the gummy bears anymore. I tried to order some. I tried to order some gummy bears, but they didn't sell them anymore. Oh. Eat naturally? I haven't had protein powder in like two or three weeks. I've mainly just been eating meat. We good now. Hopefully. But yeah, hopefully those uh, avatar cards work out well. I think they'll do pretty well. Like, I think I can sell them for more than 20 bucks a piece. So anything over 20 is profit, pretty much. So can't even be mad. But yeah, I ordered 200 of them. So, I'll see what condition and shit they come in. Yeah, look up Avatar The Last Airbender Weiss. W-E-I-S-S. -S. You'll find a bunch of shit. They came out like two months ago, I think. Yeah, Weiss is just a licensing company. Basically, they pay for IPs, and then they go through the TV show and take a bunch of screenshots and print them on cards, pretty much. That's their, like, entire business model. It's pretty smart. So they don't actually have to develop the characters themselves. You know, they just pay to use other people's characters and then profit from printing the cards. It's a good business model. Yeah, that Aang card is overrated. You can get a BGS 10 for 1700, so that's way overpriced. I've seen black label cards from the Avatar set sell for like 2000, so that's a little bit much. I'm debating sending them all the BGS to see if I can get a black label, but BGS is pretty expensive, and if they come back anything other than a black label, they're not really worth much. What I could always do is send them CGC, and then any 10s I get from CGC crack. I don't know. It's a lot of work.
Brett with the five. I love the FIFA women. I'm sure you do, Brett. It's okay. You don't have to lie here. So far, the games have been great. I saw your reaction to the WNBA video today, and it's weird. Not many people like it. Why? The WNBA is boring. They don't score. Like, that's the thing, is, like, the WNBA, like, I think the average score in a game is, like, under 60. Whereas, like, NBA games, it's, like, 90 to 100-something. So they just don't score. And there's no, like, cool dunk moments or anything like that. Like, all of the spectacle that the NBA has, the WNBA doesn't. Because they refuse to lower the fucking net height because of misogyny. Bro, what? Oh my god, bro. My attack blew me back. Are you shitting me? Damn. Oski Waski with the five. I just bought 40. I've said this before, but take this man's advice. He knows how to make money. Dude, that's the thing is like, if you um, if you list those on eBay, you can sell them for like $5 right now. The ones on eBay are selling for like three to $5 each. So you can literally just buy them on fucking TCG player <laughs> and then sell them on eBay for like 20 times what you paid for them. It's actually kind of stupid. But yeah. I don't know how quickly they sell on eBay, but if you're willing to hold on to them, they probably sell for a pretty nice premium if you're getting them for 25 cents a piece. Which I think my dollar cost average on the 200 I bought was like 30 cents each with shipping. So. It's not a bad risk to take. Bro, are you fucking shitting? Oh my god, bro. Bruh. <laughs> I got flopped over that railing. Yeah, you can upgrade your abilities. It's very minor upgrades, but... Like, this character I'm playing, I very much dislike, but his level 16 ability is going to make him really fucking good. Britt, what's your favorite WNBA player? This game is fun. You should check it out if you have Game Pass. It's free 99, man. Fuck.
congratulations. Oh my god, we won. So this is just like kind of a shortened version of the matches. That's kind of interesting. almost level 10 let's go then I'm done with it forever hooray you're a bundle of six Griffin thanks man Editors are mad at the Xbox UI because it shows the most played games across Xbox, not just your Xbox. Like, Bruh. that's the reason why Reddit is angry because there's a most played games section on the home screen that shows the most popular games on Xbox versus your most played games on Xbox. Timothy Marco of the five other companies must envy Take Two and EA because they're able to make bank publishing essentially the same sports game every year. Oh, I'm sure, man. Absolutely. They don't even have to fucking like update anything. They just do roster updates and then new cosmetics and shit like that. And Juan with the two wifey gets criticized. Who the fuck is wifey? Hopefully it's not Isiler's wifey. is trash. I don't think she's anybody's wifey, bro. That bitch ugly as hell. Uh, Juan with the two XQC getting dunked on. What about XQC? XQC, like, honestly, I can't hate on the guy because how much did he get paid to go to kick? Like, a hundred million dollars? So he's got to be doing something right. I mean, he has, like, Tard range, but I don't really know much about him. And Juan with the one. Uh-oh. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Brian with the two got the new Xbox update. It's no big deal. Yeah, from what I saw, it just makes it so your fucking wallpaper is actually visible now. That's the big change that I've heard people talk about. Shit. 
Yeah, I had zero fucking health. XQC was justifying breaking copyright. Oh, it's this shit again. Yeah, I mean, Twitch streamers, yeah, they don't really add much commentary, but it's like, it's not illegal. There's nothing wrong with watching a YouTube video on stream. What usually happens is the person who originally uploaded it gets pissed off because it gets more views than their original video did. Which, literally, if the person is just watching it with zero fucking commentary, just claim the video. You're within your legal right to do so. So that's all I would do is just copyright claim the video and take the ad revenue. But there's no rule against watching videos on YouTube. Like, sorry. Like, as shitty as it is if somebody, like, re-watches your video or some shit and adds zero commentary, it's not fucking against the rules. It's completely fine. People are just mad that he gets more views than they did. Which is the common trend. If a fucking 500 sub channel watches your video and like uploads their reaction with zero commentary and it gets like 100 views, nobody gives a shit. But when these big streamers do it, because it gets more views than their video did, then they fucking care. So, I don't know. It's more of kind of like a jealousy thing, but all you have to do is claim the video. If he truly did not commentate on it, you were within your right to claim the video. So. Yeah, it's lazy, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's completely allowed. No, you can't strike it. You're not allowed to strike it. You can claim it, but you can't strike it because technically it is transformative. Even if it's just him sitting in an overlay, it's still transformative. You may not be able to make any money off of it, but technically it's fair use. Especially with internet content like a YouTube video. If it was a TV show or movie, then maybe. But even then, you still kind of get into a gray area with that. It's just nobody wants to take this type of shit to court because it's a waste of resources over a fucking, you know, $500 AdSense video, you know? You'd waste so much money on a lawyer, it's not fucking worth it. Yeah, like, don't post a video publicly to social media if you don't want people to watch it publicly on social media. It's kind of my, uh, suggestion, personally. It's been a while since you've talked about your Pokemon cards. What do you want to know, Anki? I bought a bunch of Pokemon cards recently. In fact, today I got a order, or not today, yesterday, I opened them up today. But I bought these Rapidash V boxes from Target that were like $18 a piece, and when you open them, the packs are worth like uh, $36 inside so you basically double your money just from selling the packs individually so i opened up 90 of those today so what box am i looking at to hold um 
I'm not so much looking at boxes right now. I have a bunch of sealed product already. I'm mainly looking at slabs right now because I want to get like, for instance, Japanese PSA 9 hollows from like the original sets are really cheap right now. You can pretty much get like a PSA 9 Japanese hollow from like the original sets for under 50 bucks. Which the ch like chance of actually opening an old Japanese pack and getting a PSA 9 hollow is pretty low. Considering that the hollow in those packs is at the very front, so they take damage most of the time. But, uh. Yeah, the packs are like $300 to $400 a piece, but, you know, a PSA 9 of, like, the best card in that set is under $100 in a lot of cases. So it's like. That's just kind of a no brainer type thing, and long term, they're gonna go up. But, yeah. But I have a shit ton of Cosmic Eclipse packs and a ton of uh, Evolving Sky stuff that I'm holding on to primarily. That's the majority of like, the sealed stuff I have. That and Celebrations. Um, I opened some of the Bleach. I didn't really get anything that great. I think it's better just to keep it sealed. From what I saw, the quality of like the cards is pretty low, so I don't think they're going to grade necessarily very high, so I think it's one of those things that's maybe better to keep sealed and then let the person who's like the end buyer open it. I did grade one Bleach card and it got a 10, which I don't know how, because it was like super fucking rough on the edges, but you got it. And once it's marked as a 10, it's a 10, so not my problem. It shouldn't have gotten a 10, but it did. Congratulations. That was combat of the highest quality. I have gathered combat data that far exceeds bright side projections. Dude, I wish I could pay the grading companies to get 10s. That shit would be the biggest fucking stonk ever. I would happily bribe PSA to grade my cards better. up a few of the vivid voltage packs that came with those boxes like the other day and i got my fat gay pikachu again so i'm gonna grade him he's probably gonna get a nine though but i got a bunch of stuff to get graded including a bunch of those avatar cards when they come in so i'm gonna cash in on the ty lee cards that i purchased because i think those will be good thirst trap cards We'll have to see. I don't really dip my toes into Weiss too much, but I guess we'll find out. I paid $60 basically for 200 cards, so I'm not really stressed. Did I see Ice Poseidon? Video? No, I don't watch Ice Poseidon. I heard he got uh, arrested because he got a lap dance or whatever the fuck in Thailand. I saw the, like, I guess, headline. He was getting a lap dance or some shit. 
the parameters of this test. Explore the combined efforts of five exofighters skills. Yeah, you're not allowed to do that shit in public in Thailand. The They're pretty strict about it. Dude, this exosuit is caked up, bro. Dude, most of those Asian countries are super conservative. Like, they don't like that type of shit. New generation with the five react. I'm guessing that's the video. She had a dick. Uh oh. That makes it even better, man. That's a surprise. And a welcome one. Right? Ha ha ha, I'm so fortunate. Super. Oops. This bitch's weapons actually do a lot of damage. Nah, I'm Keys is the uh, cat girl one with the silver ass cheeks. Timothy Marco with the two. Angry Joe goes on a yearly rage rant against Matt. Oh, I'm sure I know. I mean, he's like the definition of big company bad, the channel. So, you know, he's got to keep his shtick. That really does no damage. Yeah, so I was reading something today, and the reason why, like, I mean, the new Travis Scott album like, literally sounds like fucking a Kanye album, pretty much. I looked it up, and apparently, like, a bunch of the songs either sampled Kanye's songs or literally were, like, beats from early versions of his songs. And then Kanye wrote on, like, a huge portion of the fucking songs in the album. So not only did he, like, produce the music, but he even wrote the lyrics for a lot of the fucking songs, too, so... Like, I don't know, man. 
That shit literally felt like a fucking Kanye album to me. Alright. Let's shoot this little dino. That really does no fucking damage, bro. Like, two shots does as much damage as that. That's such a wasted ability. Is that a good thing or bad thing? I think it's a good thing. Like, the song Circus Maximus on that song is literally fucking Black Skinhead Part 2. It is the exact same song. Pretty much was Kanye featuring Travis Scott. It's not completely inaccurate. Oh, we have bots. That's why we're doing so shitty. Go fucking figure, man. Go fucking figure. That's what we're doing so bad. Dude, that ability does, like, no healing either. The thing is absolute trash. They really jipped the fuck out of this character with that ability. Dude, there's no way we're finishing this shit with two fucking bots. Oh my god, this is fucking AIDS, dude. There's no fucking way we're finishing this shit. That didn't even reach him. Okay. Sick. Oh, I can't even attack the Stegosaurus because my abilities are blocked. That's fucking lovely, dude.
Oh, up another fucking stegos. Finally. Kanye hasn't created anything good since Yeezus. Did you lose your hearing after Yeezus? Because I don't know about that one, Chief. Dude, Microsoft is not acquiring Square Enix. <laughs> they are not buying Square Enix, bro. If Microsoft bought Square, they'd have three MMO RPGs. That's right, man. They would have the three biggest ones, I believe. Although I don't know if Elder Scrolls Online is that big anymore, so maybe not. They would have the two largest ones, but they would also have Elder Scrolls Online as well. For a while, Elder Scrolls Online was fucking huge. No, you can't just tech check the Steam numbers, because Elder Scrolls Online was a really popular console MMO. So, Elder Scrolls Online was, I think, more popular on console than PC. Timothy Marco with the five. Uh-oh, the discussion is starting as to whether Spider-Man 2 is different enough from the original to be justified a sequel. I truly don't care. Yeah, I really don't give a fuck about Spider-Man either. I mean, the game looks exactly like the PlayStation 4 game, but it's a literal direct sequel, so I don't really know what people are expecting. I don't think it needed to be a next-gen exclusive game, though. Anyone trying to say it's a next-gen title is like, that is not a next-generation game. That's literally a PS4 game that they're only selling on PlayStation 5. I think that's where you can make the statement, but who cares if it looks the same as the previous game in the fucking same franchise? Like, duh. It's in the exact same franchise and as a direct sequel. Of course it's gonna look similar. Last time I checked, graphical technology hasn't exactly been revolutionized overnight.
Uh, there were lots of people complaining about Tears of the Kingdom, including yourself, I'm Key. If I remember correctly. The fact they can even get a game like that to run on the Switch, though, is a technical fucking marvel, in my opinion, so I'm not gonna talk too much shit about that. That's pretty impressive in and of itself. Bro, it did it to me again. Fuck. Own worst fucking enemy. That really is a shitty ability, dude. Yeah, this game's really solid, man. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Uh, Shadow Evil with the five months. Hi, Griff. How's your day? Also, what's with Final Fantasy and Xbox? Basically, you have a bunch of soy tards on fucking social media upset that uh, Square Enix is working with Xbox and bringing Final Fantasy games to them. Just to make it uh, summed up pretty quickly. But my day has been fine. Can't really complain. Life is good, man. I hope Capcom won't make mistakes like Blizzard did with it. We'll see if that... I don't know, man. I wouldn't count on it, but... It'd be nice. Oh shit, I didn't even get to see what I got.
It seems like Capcom has a bunch of content lined up for this game, so that's kind of exciting. This game is very fun. Dude, I hated Metroid Dread. The stupid fucking unkillable enemies is, like, literally just horseshit fucking gameplay mechanics for padding. I hated that. Like, bro, I got to the part with the first EM thingy or whatever the fuck, and I was like, nope, I'm not playing this shit anymore. I'm done. That shit pisses me off in video games. The two, what's with Redditors angry about the new Xbox UI? Pretty much because there's a most played game section on it. That is literally it. They are angry about that. And the fact that the most played games are across all of Xbox and not just their console. Basically, they're upset we live in a society. That was fucking easy. Yeah, I wish consoles would have like the live player counts, but the problem is, is a lot of like platforms don't want you to do that because then like, say I'm like debating buying an old Battlefield game, for example. Well, I see there's only a thousand people on, I'm not gonna buy that game. So I guarantee you it leads to lesser game sales. Which is why they probably got rid of it. If it was like ever planned in the first place, because it probably would stop people from buying particular games. Uh, yeah, you should probably sell your PS4 if it's collecting dust, man. They're only gonna get cheaper. It's not like it's a rare or collectible console, it's super uh, readily available.
Holy fuck. Well, we lost. Dude, we got our fucking shit stuffed on that. There's not really a reason to keep a PS4 if you have a PS5 as well, because everything is like backwards compatible anyway. So it's not like you're going to be missing out on certain games that you own. Whereas, like, in the past, that was probably way more prevalent. Attack those fucking T-Rexes, people. Yeah, we lost. These guys don't know how to fucking play. Oh, we actually won. What the fuck? Let's go, dude. Damn. With like what three health left? That was combat of the highest quality. I have gathered combat They need to get the fuck away from the VTOL so the T-Rexes don't fucking hit it on accident. But no, they're like standing over in the fucking area that you shouldn't stand in. The PS5 Spider-Man edition will go up in price initially, and then it'll crash. So, if you're going to flip it, flip it quickly. It'll go down in price. It won't maintain. Because most likely, they'll just keep pumping out, like, faceplates, which basically erodes the entire need for the actual, like, PlayStation 5 console bundle. So I wouldn't hold on to it. If you can make money on it, I would get rid of it quickly. If you are concerned or confused, I am. Whoa, dude. Whoa. Oh my god. Wow. That was exciting. Sorry guys, I got a little excited there.
You hate wireless earbuds? Why would you say that? Do you get some like dog shit skull candies that are like shocking you? You have Samsung ones, not AirPods. No wonder why you hate them. Duh. You're broke! You're fucking poor! I understand. Presenting my most exciting combat project, the Savage Gauntlet. The parameters of this test explore the combined efforts of five exofighters' skills and abilities. Only the true dream cheapers will succeed here. This weekend went too quick. It honestly didn't even feel like a weekend, but yeah, that's every weekend though. Yeah, just being able to sleep through the time that I would otherwise be working makes time progress much fucking faster. Because it's like basically I skip a full eight hours or actually more like 10 hours of the day. So that I would otherwise be awake. So yeah, basically a weekend feels like maybe one day at most. Dead remaster would be fire. It would, but I don't think I would play it. If I'm keeping it a buck fifty, I don't even think I would play it. I don't know if in today's landscape that would even be a game I would be interested in. Can I not jump over that? What the fuck?
Hell yeah. Dude, Rockstar is not interested in making anything except big open world games that they can milk the online mode for. That's all they're gonna fucking make from now on. Like, they're not making any smaller projects. They're not making any games that are like niche or semi-popular. They are only gonna make franchises that are gonna make billions of dollars. There's zero fucking reason to allocate resources within Rockstar for any other reason. Bro, we cooked through that shit. Congratulations. That was combat of the highest quality. I have gathered combat data that far exceeds bright side projections. We absolutely fucking cooked through that shit, man. Damn. Groovy with the two god answer tonight. Somehow won with a bot. Well, very nice, dude. Glad to know that the Lord is still listening, my guy. I need to get this skin, dude. This shit's fire. This one's pretty cool, too. But I like this one the best. stupid little notifications. Perhaps I could become an excellent this game reminds you of Ghost of Tsushima, the fuck?
the first two episodes of Cowboy Bebop and gotta say way more entertaining the first 20 episodes of one dude that shit's old as fuck though well I mean One Piece is old as fuck too but yeah I don't know man I can't watch old anime even before when I liked anime I can't fucking watch like that 1980s shit bro that stuff looks horrible to Nordstrom today. You weren't kidding about the Creed smelling strong for hours? Yep, it's good stuff, man. It is good stuff. It's not cheap, so... go 30 years old time for the retirement home i mean for entertainment it is an old fucking product like think about it in the scheme of video games 30 years is ancient like would you guys not consider a fucking nes old i would so in the world of entertainment products, yeah, 30 years old is a fucking old product. Shit. Damn, bro. 
Mara. Bruh, are you shitting me? It was 100 degrees one day. I got barbecued at work. Shit, man. Yeah, y'all probably don't have AC in those UPS facilities, right? I know in the trucks you don't, which is fucking AIDS. Dude, get these fucking dinosaurs off the point, you tars. God, these guys fucking blow. Absolutely fucking blow. My back is terminally fucking like injured. No heat in the winter. That's got honestly. That's probably worse than no AC. The no heat shit. Like I don't mind being hot. I can get over that. But being fucking cold and like freezing. No thanks. I would much rather be dripping sweat from my fucking balls than freezing cold. Dude, are you fucking shitting me? Oh my god, these guys suck, dude. We have a tank taunting them to come towards the fucking VTOL on our team. Like, bro, go stand over there. Why are you standing next to the fucking VTOL, bruh? Here they go again. Yeah, the heat is better in the winter. There's risk of frostbite since the heat in the trucks are really bad. Yup. That's the thing. It's way easier to cool down, I feel like, than heat up. Like, naturally. Plus, I hate wearing coats, so there's also that.
I like this mode though. It's nice little like short burst action, man. I'd rather be with a hot woman than a cold one. Amen, bro. I can agree to that. Real talk. I love going outside when it's hot. Makes you feel alive, bruh. When you start sweating and all like the toxins and shit leave your body, feels great. Presenting my most exciting combat project, the Savage Gauntlet. The parameters of this test explore the combined efforts of five exofighters' skills and abilities. Only the true dream achievers will succeed here. Dry heat's actually really bad for your skin. Makes you age faster. Warm, humid climates are the best for your, like, overall physical appearance. In terms of, like, aging, it keeps your skin nice and moist and fresh. And keeps you looking younger. Dude, low tier god would get hair plugs before he ever went bald. Like, there's no way he would ever let himself go bald. Griffin is a mob boss. That's right, dude. Don't fuck with me. I'll suck your dick. No, I'm just kidding. Oh shit, I got fucking tail whip.
Yeah, luckily none of the uh, men in my family are bald, so I think I should be fine. I don't think I have to worry about balding. Not that I really care anyway. If anything, it just means I get to save money on haircuts. Fuck, dude. New generation with the two. Did you see the Ice Spice and Kim's daughter stuff? Nope. No clue. What is uh, going on with Ice Spice and Kim's daughter? I'm guessing you mean Kim Kardashian. Dude, it doesn't matter if my kids are bald, because they're going to be wealthy, so it doesn't matter. My kids aren't going to be broke, so they can be bald or have a full head of hair, whichever they want, dude. Because at the end of the day, money talks. And who gives a fuck if you're bald if you got fucking big bags of money? Like, look at Jeff Bezos. He doesn't give a fuck that he's bald. This motherfucker's got billions in the bank, bro. Who's he have to impress anymore? Oh, shit. I hit my Windows key on accident. Ice Spice felt up Kim's four-year-old daughter for a TikTok, and Kim didn't... That's fucking weird. Uh-oh, is the industry plant cracking now? Not good. Ice Spice is definitely an industry plant by all definitions. She literally makes dog shit fucking music and is just there to like make it seem like semi obese chicks are actually attractive. I'm convinced. I'm convinced, bro. They're trying to make it socially acceptable to be fat. Abra, Ice Spice, bad? Yeah, bad looking. She's ugly. And bad at singing. Thing, whatever you want to call it. She is ugly, dude. She is absolutely ugly. Her face is fucking weird. I would not smash Pokemon. I want nothing to do with Pokemon. My taste is too specific. Um, a good face and a good personality. I'm sorry, man. Lord, forgive me for my sins.
I'm sorry if that's too specific for you, I'm key, but yeah. I actually want to be like physically attracted to the person and also not hate being around them. Why am I the only one who knows how to fucking play this game, bro? Like, drag them over here, you dumb fuckers. Would I smash shoe on head? No. She was ugly if I remember correctly. Isn't she like 30 something as well too? So there's no fucking way. No thanks, bro. I ain't trying to hit up the retirement home. Like, bro, I want y'all to be honest here. Oh, let me see if I can find that short that always used to pop up. I want y'all to be honest, bro. Y'all think this is hot. I just want you to be honest here. You think this looks hot. I rest my case. Thank you. There is nothing... Like, she's just creepy looking, bruh. She is actually creepy looking. No, it's a real picture, I'm key. It's not a heavily edited, heavily posed, heavily fucking planned out photo. It's a fucking candid picture, meaning she's not able to work the angles like she normally would be able to fuck around with filters, lighting, adjustments, all that other shit. That is probably the best photo you will see of her because it's actually a real photo of her. Not some super fucking cherry picked example. Oski Waski with the five, the Mario movie made 1.3 billion something. Disney can only wish their new movies. And it's nice to see that. Agreed, man. I don't know. Like, Disney's in really big trouble. Like, they lost, I forgot how much money this month, or on this movie, Haunted Mansion or some shit. It only debuted at 30 million in the box office, so it's expected to lose them, I think, another 200 million alone on that movie, so. Bruh. Disney's taking L after L after L after L, man. Gaming. Sucks a wet dick in a fucking Olive Garden parking lot. And Doom Boom with the 15. Video by Infinite. 
Uh, Elgin Tinsley? Uh, exercise and futility feminist embarrass themselves on a game show. All right, man. And Lord Pond had investor with the two. She would look better with her natural hair. Yes and no. I just, I don't find her attractive, man. Like, if I'm keeping it a buck fitty, bro, like, I just don't find Ice Spice attractive. I think she is the definition of an industry plant, and there is nothing special about her whatsoever. I've seen more attractive chicks working at fucking Walmart. She is, like, the most unattractive target cashier in her age group. Actually, no, I take that back. She'd be the most un unattractive chick working at a Chick-fil-A. There we go. That's the perfect example. She's the most unattractive woman working at a Chick-fil-A. I saw that with the two wait until Snow White live action arrive. Oh yeah, that's gonna drop them a bunch of fucking money. So I have a theory. I think Disney is deliberately tanking themselves right now in order to lower their stock price so that they're a more appealing acquisition so they can have someone else get them out of their debt when it comes to buying Fox, which they're still paying off. And then also, so somebody else can buy them and then pay off their stake in Hulu to Comcast. I think that's the play, honestly. They're trying to purposely tank their company so that they're cheaper to buy. And then that way, they can get out of their uh, liabilities that they owe money on. Because every single movie they've released in this past calendar year has literally lost the money overall. They think they're like at negative $2 billion for all of their 2023 movie releases total. So they've lost $2 billion making movies. No, I think Apple's probably gonna buy Disney because Apple's getting heavy into the movie industry recently. Apparently Apple is the one making that Napoleon movie which is kind of interesting. From what I saw, it's not very accurate. Like, they're trying to make it like his wife was some super intelligent and important person to Napoleon, when actually she was the complete opposite. He was one of her biggest detriments. No one could understand why he ever married her, because she was such a loser. And she cheated on him all the time, was never loyal. So they're like trying to paint his wife in that movie like she was some influential and important historical figure. When in reality, the only reason why she's important is because she held Napoleon back from reaching his true potential. So they're trying to make it be like the woman propped him up kind of bullshit. So, Which is a complete and total falsehood. It's actually the complete opposite. Timothy Marco with the two, Disney somehow makes insane budget films look bad. Yup. Like, I remember I watched a Napoleon documentary way back in the day, and the line was, behind every uh, great man throughout history, there's usually an equal, like an equally great woman that is his wife. But in the case of Napoleon, that couldn't be further from the opposite. <laughs> like... Even, like, the fucking women historians were, like, shitting on this wife of his. Because, like, she's a fucking idiot. And a loser would cheat on him, embarrass him in public, and all sorts of stuff. Like, she was a complete loser. 
she's regarded as one of the worst, like, I guess, um, empresses in European history. And she, like, hated him, too. That was the other thing. She only married him because she had to. She didn't even like him. Which they tried to make it look like in the movie trailer that he was, like, in love with her and all this type of shit. And she was in love with him. It's just, like, cringy. Napoleon is one of the few people in history whose accomplishments are solely attributed to himself and himself only. Like, he pretty much came from nowhere. Like, think about it this way. Napoleon was born in a country that France colonized, essentially. He rose up through the ranks of the fucking French military and eventually became emperor. Like, keep in mind, he was never even French, but the French liked him so much that they made him emperor. <laughs> like, that's pretty incredible, dude. So, they're really taking away from that aspect, I feel like, which is sad. guys do some fucking damage? Uh, King Samuel the two Napoleon was the last French person who was- well, he wasn't even French. I forget what the fucking island nation he was from. Was it? I think it was Sicily, maybe? I don't remember. Shit. I should know what it's called. Yeah, that's it. Corsica. That's the island I'm thinking about. Yeah, basically the French conquered Corsica. And he was essentially a political prisoner. Enlisted in the military. And just through, like, sheer military genius, rose through the fucking ranks. And because of that fact, he became emperor of um France because he did such a good job in the French military so that's a much more interesting story than supposedly hit my wife propping me up but well, you know of course dude it's Hollywood in 2023 women need all the credit for everything they didn't do Dude, it's like I watched this other documentary at one point on Julius Caesar, and they tried to claim that his daughter was the reason why he was so successful militarily. It's like, dog, what the fuck are they talking? Like, I'm telling you, dude, these motherfuckers are desperate to, like, rewrite this shit. It's like, without his daughter making political arrangements in Rome, he would have never been able to continue his campaign. It's like, well, she did a shitty fucking job because that's the reason why he was declared a fucking traitor, you retards, is because of the people in Rome not approving of his campaign. And it's just like, these people are desperate to make women have a bigger role in history than they actually do have. Oh, yeah, dude, the claim that Beethoven and Mozart were black, the fucking black Hebrew Israelites have been trying to push that shit forever. It's laughably stupid. Yeah, 
It is laughably fucking stupid. What do I think of Joan of Arc? She saved the French's ass, and like every great leader that the French have, they're determined to get rid of them, so yeah. The French are some self-destructive motherfuckers when it comes to, you know, getting rid of positive leadership. Like, they banished Napoleon, they fucking killed Joan of Arc. You know, they beheaded their kings just in order to replace them with worse kings. It's just, like, insane, bruh. Yep, they burned her at the stake as a witch. Oh my god, someone who actually knows how to play this game? Bro, what? What the fuck just happened? Bro, did y'all see that shit? Rob of the Five, there's a documentary about Rome on Netflix, and they tried to convince us that Caesar was imprisoned by the Egyptians and Cleo free. Oh my god. Yeah, right. They were under siege in fucking Rome, or in Egypt by the Ptolemy brother, but that's because Caesar decided to back Cleopatra instead. So, yes. He was under siege in Alexandria, but he was never held prisoner in Egypt. That's fucking foolish. He arrived with his fucking military. <laughs> How would they hold him fucking prisoner? It's just insane, dude. Yeah, Netflix is fucking retarded. DJ Aftershock with the five, the world would have been a b wait, would have been better off if England slash House of Plantagenet won the Hundred Years' War and seized France outright. Dual monarchy slash Angevin Empire, baby. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. The British monarchy has always been weak, though. That's the thing. The British monarchy has always been the most faulty and weak monarchy of Europe because they have a constitutional monarchy where basically the nobles pick the king in a sense. So not, not necessarily because at any point they could completely overthrow the current military. Which would not, or not military, monarchy. So it depends. Well, dude, if you saved Caesar from being stabbed to death, what would have happened is the Roman Empire probably never would have been a thing. 
Basically, Caesar would have been tyrant for the rest of his life or dictator for life. He would have died, and then they would have gotten rid of that. It would have been like Sulla, pretty much, where basically he was dictator for life until he died. So, if anything, they would have defaulted back to the Roman Republic if they would have just waited it out. But the problem was is the senators had to give up their public lands... So basically, the thing that made the senators mad about Caesar is the fact he wanted to get rid of slavery within the city of Rome in terms of them taking all the jobs. Because, you know, why pay somebody to do a job when you could just buy a slave to do it and then you're done? But, you know, that was the main thing other than basically Caesar wanted to take the public lands away from the senators because what would happen is like the city of Rome owned like the area around Rome in terms of the farmland and they would allocate it while well, the Senate was in charge of allocating it so guess where they're going to allocate the land to themselves so basically what he wanted to do was take the land back from the senators and allocate it to his veterans and like the actual citizens of Rome so that they could make money and grow food and everything on the land which would have hurt the uh, senators financially. Those were the two main reasons why he got assassinated. It had nothing to do with him actually having like dictator's power. It was more so what he was doing with that power. That's what pushed them over the edge, is they didn't want to lose their source of income. Well, technically, the English monarchy is already French. That's what's funny. Like, ever since 1100, I think it was, a French royal lineage has ruled over England. Because the Normans invaded England, basically united the island, formed England as we know it today, and they were French. They came from Normandy. So, yup. The British have not had a British ruler for over, what, 900 years now? So it literally took the fucking French, basically, to invade England to actually make it a country in the first place, which is kind of funny. Presenting Pretty ironic if you think about it. The Savage Gauntlet. The parameters of this test explore the combined efforts of five exofighters' skills and abilities. Only the true dream achievers will succeed. So when the French say they have a claim to the English throne, they technically do. They're sitting on it right now. Normandy is Mass Effect? No, it's not, bro.
The Norman were weren't French. They were descendants of Viking settlers living in Normandy. And they're not related to the French at all. Uh, dude, literally William the Conqueror was a French nobleman. His family, yes, were descendants of the Vikings, but you're forgetting about the fact that literally the guy that started like the House of Normandy or whatever the fuck it's called, like the first guy in that family's lineage who became a French nobleman, I believe was married to a French princess. So literally, they're French. At least the motherfuckers in charge. So, no, they definitely did have French lineage, man. I'm pretty sure being related to the previous king of France is pretty much as French as it gets, but hey. He's not very smart, guys. Bully him. Intellectual conversation scares him. Yo, what the fuck? Dude, being made French nobility meant you were considered to be French, my guy. At the end of the day, all of humanity originates from the exact same fucking spot, so... Other than identity, there's really no difference between any of us if you really want to boil it fucking down when it comes to lineage. We all come from the fucking Fertile Crescent. guys not deal damage or some shit? What's going on over here? The French Revolution definitely did more harm than good. The government that replaced the French government was far less effective. Like when they got rid of the monarchy, it was like literally just a power vacuum and literally the worst actors in the political French landscape took over. And the average person had a lower quality of life than prior to the French Revolution. So they thought they were making a uh, positive change, but in reality they were signing up for something worse. Come on, guys. Kill that stupid fucking T-Rex. Yeah, 
the U.S. revolution didn't end the same way because the United States was already made up of extremely self-sufficient um, cities and towns and everything like that. The European colon or the European countries at the time were heavily dependent on like colonial resources and manufacturing and everything like that. In America, we were way more self-sufficient. So that's the thing, we didn't really rely on Great Britain's infrastructure. Timothy Marco with the two, the current French elites drank adrenochrome. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah, it's kind of interesting in France. Speaking of elites, you have like the uh, Duke of Paris, I think is his name, which is basically the uh, House of Bourbon's like rightful heir. So if like the Louis were still in charge of the country and they kept like that line of kings going, he would technically be king. Which is kind of funny. So he has like a honorary title called the Duke of Paris. And then Napoleon's heir is still alive and kicking, you know. Your suit seems to have suffered great and yeah, it's kind of interesting, man. Like basically you have these people who should have claims to the French throne that just kind of exist. They're just chilling out. Oscar Rodriguez with the two. What if they brought back the guillotine? I think we should, honestly. We should have a guillotine set up in the middle of every fucking town square and all the pedophiles, murderers, rapists, you know, drug dealers, all of those people that, like, are basically facing life in prison. We should just pull them out to the fucking middle of the town and chop their fucking head off in front of everybody so then you realize, oh, shit. If I break the law, I actually have, you know, consequences. Other than sitting in a fucking jail cell doing whatever I want all day. I ain't cleaning that up. I mean, all you'd need is a fucking hose, bro. It's not that hard to get rid of blood. DJ Aftershock with a five. One of the reasons the Spanish colonies failed is due to Spain tightly controlling them compared to the British laissez-faire approach to the colonies. Yep, but it's also what bit them in the ass. Because we got too independent. So you need to find like that uh happy medium, I guess. To where the colonies are still somewhat reliant but then again the british tried to do that with like the tea tax and everything like that so i don't know dude it's just it's pretty interesting because we really are the only super successful colonial spin-off I mean, I guess you could say the Canadians are pretty decent as well, but for the most part, every other country kind of went to shit. That the British and the, uh, well, I guess the British did own Canada, so yeah. There you go. None of them really evolved to, like, the state of, like, Canada and the U.S., We were just built different, bro. I wouldn't really consider Australia a super dominant power, but... Australia is kind of cucked by China nowadays, unfortunately.
Live, laugh, love. There you go. India is pretty strong, vastly larger population than the US. No war with will be good. Dude, India would get bodied in any fucking war. Like, no offense to anyone from India, but the Indian military is a fucking joke. It's a landlocked military with very little technical advancement whatsoever. No military tech that's even in the fucking stratosphere of something as like the United States, Europe, or China has. So, no. Dude, the Chinese military is a fucking joke compared to the U.S. military technologically. They may have a large military, but if you can't mobilize that military, who fucking cares? You literally just have a massive target for people to target. Like, yeah, you have a million troops. Cool, now we know where to send the fucking drone strikes. <laughs> like, what are fucking ground troops gonna do against fucking rain, like, raining hellfire, dude? Nothing. It just makes ballistic missiles have an easier target to hit. So if the Indians actually tried to declare war with an actual world power, they would get absolutely fucking bodied. It's the same thing with fucking North Korea. Technically, North Korea, I believe, has the largest standing military. But yeah, what is North Korea gonna fucking do with that shit? Absolutely nothing. Because everybody would just bomb the shit out of them and then all of that fucking army would just be dead. Like, there's a reason why the U.S. has military bases scattered over the entire fucking world. It's so we can literally strike any military before it leaves their fucking home country. It's not on accident. The British military is one of the better ones in Europe, but that's not really saying much. It's pretty weak. Definitely nowhere what it used to be. The South Korean military is the US military. Like, the only reason there's a North and South Korea today is because of a continued ceasefire between North and South Korea enforced by the United States. So, without the US, North Korea would invade South Korea tomorrow and they would probably get killed. Because the North Koreans are fucking ruthless. Japan does not have a military. They have a quote-unquote defense force, which is part of their, like, atonement for World War II. But the U.S. military, again, is pretty much Japan's military. Japan is our bitch. 
Yeah, they have the JDF, which is the Japanese Defense Force. It's not a formal military, but it serves to protect if someone basically invaded their country. But yeah, the US military has pretty much been Japan's military since they lost World War II. Do I believe in ghosts? Nope. this guy. Gas. Yeah, this shit's gas, bro. I don't know why we do it. South Korea talk a lot of shit about US. Yeah, it's because they're our bitch, dude. I mean, we literally, like, I don't know, dude. Like, I think even if they talk shit, who cares? We should have made South Korea into a formal US territory, in my opinion. Same with Japan, same with most of Europe that we reconquered from the Nazis, but, you know. We had dipshits in charge. Oscar Rodriguez of the Five, one of the problems with anime today is that it's produced by anime fans drawing inspiration from other anime instead of drawing from real life. I mean, it's one... I mean, this may be controversial, dude, but they're more concerned about, like, appealing to certain fetishes because all they want to do is sell merchandise. Like, anime in and of itself is not profitable. The only thing profitable about anime is, like, selling merch. So the thing they have to do in order to sell merch is appeal to like the most degenerate members of their audience. So there's literally a fucking financial motivation to appeal to the fucking degen weeaboos in order to make money. 
so that's the thing, unfortunately. So anything that has like super niche fetishy type shit, lots of fan service, you know, really attractive female characters to fucking weebs and otakus, like that's the shit that they're gonna make because it makes money on like the second hand side of things when it comes to like merchandising the show. But basically what it is, is a lot of losers living out their fucking fantasies because they never had a fucking life of their own in the first place. Griffem, you watch my favorite anime, Oppenheimer? No, I don't know if I will ever watch Oppenheimer. Honestly, I don't really have a huge desire to see it. I'm just not a movie guy, honestly. The only movie I want to see is, uh, Gladiator 2. Aside from that, I don't really have any movies I want to go see particularly. Dude, I'd rather watch the Barbie movie than Oppenheimer, but I don't want to see either. I would probably enjoy the Barbie movie more than Oppenheimer, but yeah, I like saying Oppenheimer. It's a weird name. do one more match then we'll do videos is that Jen? I wish dude it is uh, basically lemonade without sugar <laughs> it's just uh, water and lemon juice Oski Waski with the five, exactly. Look at animes like My Hero, Academia, Demon Slayer, Naruto, and Sword Art Online. It caters to a lot of those people, and you know what I mean? That's right, man. You know what I mean. Sucks like wet dick in a fucking Olive Garden parking lot. Yeah, I mean, look at that fucking card I bought from Avatar The Last Airbender, dude. Like, even that shit's appealing to the fucking, uh, particular male gaze. Oscar Rodriguez with a five, true, but drawing from reality is where originality comes from, even if it's been done before. The best animators and filmmakers do so. Yup, but unfortunately, man, I don't really think there's many real life scenarios of, oh my god, my best friend turned into a girl and now I want to fuck him. Bruh. Oh wait, never mind, that does happen today. Gaming. Oski Woski with a two. Did your great grandfather ever work with Oppenheimer? Maybe. I don't know, honestly. He's dead now, so I can't ask him. But he worked on the Manhattan Project directly, so I would assume so. If he didn't work with him, he worked under him. But, I mean, my great grandfather was like some genius level chemist, so I'm assuming he probably would have. But, no clue. Can't ask him now. Would I support the U.S. conquering the world? Duh. Rather the U.S. conquer the world than fucking China. Yeah, my great-grandfather was like a certified genius. So, 
He had like the highest IQ of the company that he worked at. Like he had the highest measured IQ score at the chemical company he worked at. And I think his company got bought by uh, DuPont, I believe, which is a huge fucking company. Like, you can thank DuPont for the creation of plastic. That's how influential they were. But, yeah. He was like the highest IQ scientist that worked at that company. He was like a multi-millionaire by age 30. And unfortunately, my grandfather made a bunch of shitty investments when his father passed away and blew all the fucking money, basically. Now, my grandfather did make a bunch of money as an accountant later in life, but, you know, I could have been one of those old money families that never had to fucking work unless you wanted to. But, yeah, bag fumbled, man. Now I have to like revive that dream for my future generations. It's up to me to provide it now. <laughs> but yeah, now I have to be the one to create the generational wealth that will make it so my family never has to fucking work again. I was born rich? No, because my dad, like, so my grandpa wanted my dad to be an accountant with him and work with him, but my dad didn't want to, so he joined the military, so they weren't on great terms for a very long time, because he went into the military against his wishes instead of, like, joining the family accounting firm, so yeah, no, my dad was in the military, bro, my mom didn't work, so not exactly what you would consider to be rich, but yeah. What did my grandma do? Stayed at home. Oh shit, dude. Damn, he didn't even attack me, dude. I needed that damage. But yeah, no, unfortunately I was not one of those people that was born rich. I wish I was. That shit would have been great, man. Luckily, my kids will not be in the same boat and we will all be balling by then. And no one will have to work other than me. SNK nostalgia with the two. My dad was in the Navy, then worked for Lockheed. Yeah, one of my cousins was one of the top executives at Lockheed Martin at one point.
How do I plan on achieving that level of wealth, real estate, and cash flow? Pretty easy. Just having a bunch of different income streams, rolling it into other income streams, and rinse and repeat. Pretty simple. Oscar Rodriguez with the two. If I was rich, I'd still make my kids do the job. I wouldn't. I would teach them how to manage money and use money to make more money. I would never make them actually work. But I would teach them how to invest, how to like, you know, flip, that type of shit. Basically make your money work for you. That's what I would teach them what to do. So I guess work, but work smarter, not harder in a sense. It'd be more of like money management skills than anything else. Investing is not working. Dude, getting on my fucking cell phone and like going on my fucking Schwab account and moving money between stocks is not what I would consider work, but hey. To each their own, bruh. Or buying a bunch of Pokemon cards is not what I would consider to be work. Yeah, like I would never make my kids get a job, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If you want to consider investing and money management work, then whatever. Sure, they will work, quote unquote, but will they ever have to get like a fucking retail job or go work a nine to five or some dog shit like that? Hell no. Unless they want to, then they can. I'll do a thing basically where like whatever my kids earn, I'll double it for them to encourage them to become like resourceful and make money. So like whatever they earn like that month, I'll like double it for them and be like, oh, here you go. You made 10 grand, here's another 10. So. So I'll actively like encourage them to make money, but They'll never have to get a job if they don't want to. Yeah, being a YouTuber is where it's at and you get all the bitches. Nah, -uh, bro. I'm still waiting for one, dog. Much less all. Yeah, Mini, di Mini Lad did get all the bitches, but the problem was he picked them up from fucking daycare. gonna pull Violet Myers, Melanie Mack, and Amber Lim Oh no, never mind man, I'm gay shit. I'm not into women. Oops. Imagine being told by your parents that you don't have to work? Exactly, man. But then encouraging them to do so anyway with more rewards so that they uh, still learn, you know, work ethic. Because everybody likes making money. 
Even the richest motherfuckers on planet Earth like making more money. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep investing and, you know, doing all that type of shit. So. Even fucking Warren Buffett, dog, is still concerned about making more money. You can never have enough. New generation with the five react to? Alright, man. Um, mute. Haste and go. Alright, let's do this one last time. This is Sniper Wolf. She's a YouTuber with over 30 oh, million subscribers. She uploads daily, and her videos get at least a million views each. So, what does she do? She steals TikToks and reacts to them. Who cares? I don't think you can steal a TikTok. Oh, it looks like a cartoon! Let's talk about how egregious this freebooting is. In each of her hundreds and hundreds of videos, she plays other people's TikToks and provides extremely base-level commentary. So? There's nothing wrong with that. Who is running sideways? What? Wow. If you want to support the original creators of the TikToks, uh, too bad. Because the only links you'll find in the description are all Sniper Wolf. And my... You don't have to link TikToks. Favorite part is that half of the TikToks she includes either crop out the original username or just straight up don't have one. To use a recent example from just three days ago, she features 19 videos, 13 of which don't have any identifiable usernames. That means there's no way to find and support the original creators here. All of the views and all of the revenue go straight to Sniper Wolf. You know the phrase, work smarter, not harder? Well, Sniper Wolf does neither. She just steals and doesn't credit anyone. And as be She just steals? You don't have to fucking credit people to watch their videos. Come a zillionaire in doing so. <laughs> a fire hydrant exploded and the water's just going everywhere. Pretty cool. Now, some of you might be thinking, so what? Who cares? She's giving creators exposure. And hey, maybe she gets permission from the creators to feature their work. You already know the answer to that. We reached out to creators who- You don't- uh if you don't want people watching your videos, do not upload them to the internet publicly. This is so stupid. Who've had their work featured in Sniper Wolf's videos. And when we asked them if Sniper Wolf and or her team had contacted them about featuring their work, every creator said no, they were not contacted. Most of them were blindsided by the fact like, that- Like, you don't get to set the bar of what you consider to be fucking reasonable commentary or whatever. She's transforming the content and reacting to it. It's perfectly acceptable. Sniper Wolf have been using their content, and some of them were pretty upset about it. Okay, so she doesn't ask permission, but maybe creators get exposure from her videos, especially if you can see their usernames, right? Well, let's test that theory. At the very beginning of a recent video, Sniper Wolf reacts to a viral TikTok, complete with her very insightful commentary. Uh-uh, uh-uh, absolutely not. And look, you can see the original uploader's username. Maybe they got a little bump, right? Well, when I looked up their account on TikTok, I found they had a decent number of followers, but that's probably due to their whale shark video going viral last year. Because if you look at their most recent TikToks, they're hardly getting any views at all. Which means that, no, people aren't flocking to the original creators even when their username is displayed on screen. And remember, this is the first TikTok in a video with well over a million views. But guess who's reaping all the benefits? So what? Dude, that's like saying that people that play video games on YouTube and do a Let's Play are stealing game developers' content. This is fucking stupid. <gasps> Believe it or not, it actually gets worse because sometimes Sniper Wolf steals from other content thieves. Here she is reacting to an Among Us cartoon made by Viral For You. And shocker, that's not the original creator. Because we found the original creator, it only has 1,600 views here on YouTube, but it went bonkers on TikTok when someone else freebooted it, and here's the original creator confirming that their work was indeed stolen. So for everyone claiming, well, at least Sniper Wolf's not hurting anyone, she very much is. But even if she did credit the creators and ask their permission to feature them, it still wouldn't make her content any better. Because, man, I cannot stress how nothing her commentary is. So what? You don't get to set the bar of what you think is acceptable commentary, my guy. She could fire back at you and say, Oh, I don't think you're providing good enough commentary to use my video. It goes both ways. <laughs> this is just, this is dumb. 
Just say you think her fucking content shit, dude. Quit trying to act like this moral grandstanding dipshit. Oh, what's that? A whole entire car just rolled into the neighbor's yard. See, the reason I keep playing these clips is because of a little thing called fair use. The extremely important legal doctrine that allows creators to... Oh, now he's a lawyer. ...content that isn't theirs. And in order for content to fall under fair use, it must be transformative. And yeah, I would say her talking over a video is transformative, bro. Just like you talking about hers. Add new meaning to the material. That's how I was able to monetize my old infomercial and Apple parodies. Yeah, I was using copyrighted content, but my satirical slant added transformative value. Going back to Sniper Wolf, her commentary isn't so much transformative as it is just summarizing what we're watching. Someone caught a cow. Is that a cow? Oh no, one of them rolled down the hill. That is literally the definition of transformative, bro. It's not even content, it's nonten. Sniper Wolf is the damn that's crazy of reactors. Oh my god, so dude, I fucking hate Sniper Wolf, but... This is like such a clear fucking cut case of, yes, she's doing nothing wrong. Sorry. If you don't fucking like it, that's fine, but she's not doing anything wrong. I can't afford this shit! I don't, I don't like this type of shit, dude. There's enough issues with copyright bullshit on YouTube. We don't need these fucking dipshits piling on going after Sniper Wolf in particular. After all, she's hardly the only person stealing other people's content and reaping all the benefits. Is it because, as she suggested, that I'm sexist and only go after female reactors? Well, no, 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 and no. And you might want to delete that tweet since you love deleting tweets about me, but more on that later. No, the real reason is actually this. Have you ever read a tweet that broke your brain? Because this broke mine. This is the official YouTube creator's account on Twitter, with over 6 million followers, acknowledging Sniper Wolf as a keynote speaker at last month's VidCon, claiming she gets her ideas from her fans. Now there are several So maybe people send her TikToks. Things wrong with this tweet. Like, why is she a keynote speaker at VidCon? Why is YouTube creators bolstering this? Because she's a massive fucking YouTuber. That's why she's a speaker at VidCon. She has how many million subs? Of course they're gonna have her there if she'll show up. She's one of the biggest creators on the platform. She might know a thing or two about, I don't know, content creation. Holy fuck, dude. Are you upset that you weren't a speaker? Like, what is this shit? This is dumb. Like, are you mad that you didn't get your own little tweet from the YouTube creators account? Like, Kai with the five, this argument is dumb. They are all credited in her video with their at. My annoying brother will die on this. Well, dude, I don't, you don't even have to credit people. Like, if I make a reaction video to someone, I don't have to put on screen, this video is from X person. Link in the description to their video. You don't have to do that shit. All you have to do is take the video and transform it, offer commentary, or like satire, educational value, parody, whatever. As long as you are transforming that content and not just straight up re-uploading it, it is a fucking okay. So it's this is like such a non-issue. This guy just this is like literally encouraging more strict copyright rules on fucking YouTube, which is beyond retarded. That only hurts everyone. This. But the worst thing about the tweet is this, getting video ideas from her fans. What ideas? Quite literally, all she does is upload other people's TikToks. How is that an idea? What am I not getting here? Do her fans comment, here's an idea, you should react to more TikToks. And she goes, damn, that's crazy. Sorry, I feel a little gaslit here. Seeing you Maybe her fans send the fucking TikToks to her. YouTube and VidCon boost this kind of activity is so disheartening. It sends a terrible message to creators. And that is, don't create, steal. Why make... <laughs> Dude, he's so fucking ass-blasted. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is a pretty big channel too, right? Yeah, 4 million subs. He just sounds petty, dog. He just sounds like he's upset that he didn't get the fucking invite. Content when you can curate it. What's the point in writing music or animating or perfecting your craft when you can just upload someone else's hard work and say, This is nuts. Like, I cannot even believe what I'm seeing right now. Me neither. <laughs> the other reason I'm going after Sniper Wolf is she made fun of my hairline. Now that's something only my wife friends, family, and viewers get to do. Not you, Sniper Wolf. Never you. You know, maybe you should react to better comebacks because this is embarrassing. I, I get why you deleted it. I would delete it too. Woof. 
Now, part of the reason Sniper Wolf has gotten away with this theft for so long is that her audience is children. And I don't mean that condescendingly. I mean, her viewers are literally kids. And kids don't care about things like content theft or freebooting. They just want to go to the page with all the funny TikToks. Wow, this YouTuber has all the coolest TikToks. I really want to know how Sniper Wolf finds all those videos to react to. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. Maybe from the people that made them? By the way, that's a real tweet from YouTube. Or, uh, you know, maybe her fans send them to her. Crazy. I'm, I'm just going to throw that out there, guys. People do get video suggestions from their fans. Are you starting to see why my blood's boiling? So Sniper Wolf's viewers don't care or know about the stolen content. Maybe we should tell them. Maybe we write things in her comment section like credit the creators, or hey, I wonder where these TikToks came from, or you think she has permission to use these, or why is her commentary not transformative? She's merely summarizing what we're watching. Okay, maybe that last one's a little too verbose for the- That is transformative, you tard. That falls under educational value under fair use. If you're educating or providing commentary in addition to the copyrighted material, it's fair use under the format of education. See, this is what's so stu- Why is he, like, encouraging this type of shit? This is horrible, bro. No one who makes YouTube content should actively be encouraging YouTube to crack down on copyright. Fuck off, bro. Hell nah. The kitties, but you get my point. Now, Sniper Wolf, if you're watching this, Hi, big fan. You're probably thinking a few things right now. One is, why is he so obsessed with me? That's like saying that if you review a movie, that's not transformative because all you're doing is summarizing the movie. Or if you're playing a fucking let's play of a video game, you're not fucking transforming the content present in the video game. You're just talking over it. This is so ig- Like, I get he doesn't like Sniper Wolf. That's fine. Her content's fucking dog shit. But this is not the fucking hill you want to die on as a content creator. This is horrible. Shut the fuck up, bro. You are literally going to hurt the platform more than you think you're helping it. To which I say, are you serious? I just, I just told you that a moment ago. Another thing you might actually be thinking is, he's just jealous of my success. And you know what, Sniper Wolf? I am. Of course I am. You've stolen your way to the top. You've made your millions, but off the backs of hundreds of other creators who didn't really consent oh to this Oh my god, he's so fucking petty. I'm, I'm jaded. This is my 17th year on YouTube, and I've seen this platform evolve countless times since I started in 2006. Back then, the content YouTube would boost was sketch comedy or meticulous music videos or content. Just genuine... No, action. do you know what YouTube used to fucking do? They used to recommend a bunch of re-uploads of fucking Family Guy and music and all that other type of shit, which is why they had to crack down on copyright dipshit. And you're here basically encouraging that same fucking behavior. Actual content. Today, the very definition of content is arguable because anything can be content, for better or for worse. When you turn on the water, it's gonna fill up the water bottle. Oh, and then the water pours out of it so you can wash your hands. I'm just gonna say it. This sucks. This absolutely sucks. Both the thing itself and YouTube's promotion of it. So now what? Where do we go from here? I've said my piece, but will anything actually change? Hopefully not. Probably not. Good. Which is why I'm not done. Nothing needs to change. Last year, I made a new channel called Jigga Jacks Films. It was a parody of Sniper Wolf's channel where I reacted to her videos, but in the most drawn out way possible. So for seven days. Oh my gosh, a whole week to make paper? No thanks, I'll just buy it at the store. Uh, no, I kid, of course. No, it's a very complicated process. A whole week. Oh, it's been one week since you made me paper. <laughs> These videos were intentionally hard and painful to watch, which got me thinking. What if I made them entertaining? Instead of playing a character, what if I just graded each one of her reactions with legitimate criticism? And what if I credited the creators whenever possible, both in the video and in the description? And what if, occasionally, I enlisted the help of my good friend Jack GPT? Jarvis, please write a haiku on wife. Oh my god. Is this guy this obsessed with her? Freebooting is bad. Pirates of the web. <laughs> Snatching memes. Dude, this is like some obsession type shit. No cred? I made an entire channel. Dedicated to her. <laughs> Bruh. <gasps> Holy shit, dude. That is not the fucking flex you think it is. Original sad. Oh Why my you god. Call that transformative? Heck, I'd argue it even falls under fair use. Wouldn't you agree, Sniper Wolf? Yeah, I'm not really asking. <laughs> It's minus 57 degrees. Minus 57 degrees. Yeah, that's what he, that's what he said. Yep. Try to pour a can of Coke. You try to pour a can of Coke. <laughs> stop, stop, stop repeating. You just, she's just repeating what they say louder. Anyways, the first video is already up on Judge Jack's Films. Go check it out and subscribe because I will be uploading there daily for as long as I want to. You see this big guy? He be eating all of the little guys. <laughs>
Bottom line, effortless reaction content has only grown more common since the days of Jinx. And just because it's more normalized now, doesn't make it right. I will continue to call out thieving mooches like this, and I hope my fellow creators will do the same. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find a good home for this small glass of wine. Shout out to the people that actually make stuff. Mwah. Oh my god, dude. This guy is like such a petty little fucking, like, twat. What a jealous little fucking worm, man. That shit is a horrible fucking take. That is a fucking horrible ass take on copyright. Oh god. What is this shit? XQC. Oh shit. XQC, I'm going to just uh say this. All right, yeah, bird look there's merch. Merch link in the description. Go check it out. Bird merch wow, we're link in the description. Um your content is going Yeah, basically he's made that video to try and boost his second channel so that he can do the same low effort content that he's shitting on her for and make a fuck ton of money from it. You got to love the irony, man. Your react content, you aren't even reacting. You're literally just putting your face in the corner of a video saying next to nothing so you can make money. That's it. That's the video. Have a good day. This was my TED talk. Keep it up. Sexy. So there's a couple things I am going to say here. One is a shameless plug. I live stream on a secondary channel called RT terms of service change where i can never react to someone's video ever again my live streams and my youtube content would be just fine it's the same thing back in the day people like oh rich with your news stories you use gameplay footage you wouldn't last without if gameplay footage you couldn't use it anymore hi here i am in front of the camera it's called diversifying and changing so i just want to put this out there because it's an important thing to preface this with, with this because well first off i more so agree with mudahar anyway as a person who reacts to content and secondly i don't want anyone thinking that uh, i'm going into this trying to you know cover my own ass because there are very valid points that muda brings up here and after watching xqc's react content dude he's just milking the system full stop he's milk he's he so and people can copyright claim him. Adds absolutely nothing to the React content. So a YouTuber named Bub Games or Bub Films on Twitter called out XQC initially and said this: uh, Lamino spends months researching, scripting, and editing a video just for React streamers to re-upload the entire thing and provide zero input. Then copyright claim it. And if you think he's kidding about him providing zero input, by all means, Jay, roll that beautiful goddamn bean footage. Just let me know. We're gonna try to do In early 2007, this silent black and white video was uploaded by a user on a conspiracy and UFO centric forum called Above Top Secret. The user claimed the video depicted a disc shaped UFO outmaneuvering a fighter jet somewhere off the coast of Mexico in the mid 2000s. They had supposedly gained access to the video while serving on board a US aircraft carrier and claimed to have smuggled a potentially classified material off the ship. While some members of the forum chose to believe their story, others were not so easily convinced. For instance, the video was hosted on a website belonging to a group of German film students, which led some to denounce the clip as an attempted hoax. Even those who believed it could be genuine still complained that it was a totally uninspiring video of a fuzzy dot. Well, anyway, this tweet by Bub Games got a lot of traction. So just copy... Dude, if he doesn't commentate over it, just copyright claim it. And XQC... I'm sure XQC is not going to give a fuck, but you know. He became very, very butthurt, and he actually responded back and said this. I paused like crazy. I added a lot of commentary. Sure, you did, champ. The chat was getting mad at me. He even claimed that someone DM'd him telling him to shut the F up, which, well, if they're telling you to shut up, then then, then they must not be watching your ass. Dude, people tell me to shut the fuck up sometimes when I pause videos. That happens all the time, dude. Like, the thing is, is most people, when you're watching a video on stream, want the video to play, and then once you watch it, you talk about it. They don't want you, like, pausing it and going on a 45-minute tangent in the middle of the fucking video. Or actual streams, then maybe they're watching mine where I actually don't shut up, because the multiple React videos I've watched from you, XQC, just to make sure that the internet wasn't just putting up their pitchforks, because trust me, I know how that is. Dude, you just sit there, and you make DSP Reacts seem like it should win a Webby Award. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Phil is, and I'm not even saying this to be sarcastic, Phil is a much better reactor than you, and he's not great. That's putting it lightly. So imagine how bad you are. Now XQC goes on to say, yes, a lot of reaction streams is just watching it because that's what the chat wants. If I commentate too much, chat gets effing bored, chat gets mad. Then dude, here's what I do then, and maybe it's a bad business. I talk 
a lot, arguably way too much when I react to video. You generation with the five isn't XQC the one who said he'd sue the Olympics for taking down his stream? Well, yeah, that's the thing is taking down a stream is different than copyright claiming a stream. Like, say I watch a fucking video or some shit and somebody copyright claims my video, they're just taking the money that the ads generate from that point on. If they copyright strike it, then the video goes down. It makes no fucking sense for anyone to strike down videos over copyright. It just makes sense for you to claim them. So if you truly believe <laughs> that fucking XQC is stealing your video, copyright claim it. I highly doubt he'll even refute it. Because at the end of the day, he makes all of his money from streaming and just re-uploads the videos in order to, like, you know, serve as, like, on-demand shit. So, I don't know, man. Yes. Many will tell you that I, it could take, like, two hours for me to get through a ten-minute video. If, but that's the point. That's the point, XQC. If people are tuning in to me... I'm assuming they want my take, not just to watch the video, and if they want to just watch the damn video, then they could go watch the video. What it seems like to any person with two brain cells in their head is that you're just content forming. And then on top of it too, with you not talking at all, I watched your highlight clips, you're taking someone else's video, you're saying that it's fair use because you're in the corner saying two or three things, and they're competing with their own video that you're watching <laughs> in the algorithm where you're not making it transformative because you're saying next to nothing, but you're hiding then just copyright claim it. That's why that system exists. Behind the thin veil that it's transformative because you're in the corner and you say, yep, wow, ha ha ha, oh, ooh, ah. Now, Mudahar, who has a large following and this probably also made XQC butthurt, called out uh, XQC and this is what he said on Twitter. It started with this, uh, just a shame garbage like this fills the recommended tab. Now that video he showed here where it's talking about the Kennedy uh, JFK, I can't say it for obvious reasons. Um, I watched that. XQC is saying next to nothing. Again, it's just like, wow, this video- Dude, I don't even put a fucking uh, camera in the corner, so technically I do less. It was popular, so I'm gonna sit in the corner, my audience will do basically whatever I say, and I'll say it next to nothing and make free money. And XQC anyway responds to- Isn't the internet a wonderful place? Some ordinary gamers, because he's relevant enough to respond to. I wonder what triggers people like you so much. Revenue share, audience split, algorithm. I've heard this complaint a million times, and most public figures try to attack it from multiple angles just to fall flat on their face. He's not falling flat on his face, dude. He has a point. You are not adding anything to this content. Then why hasn't he been removed for copyright infringement? Nothing. Nothing to this content at all. I'm watching a vid. I like to I like to my people. That actually I would disagree, man. Just being in his stream adds to the content. Because, you know, I don't know. we It's not really a point to refute this type of shit. I think it's already been well established in court. If the copyright holder has a problem, they can file a copyright claim and then take it from there. Like, the system exists for a reason. That's it. Well, so, so do something then. Have a personality. Like, I'm not saying that you... I know enjoyment is subjective and some people... XQC definitely has a personality, bro rather choke themselves than watch my streams but one thing i will say and i think if you sat there and, and how much does rich talk compared to the video and how much does xqc talk compared to the video and when it comes down to math i add a lot more to the content people may not like what i add to the content but i don't shut up because that's what people i think i hope are there for is to have me add my own take to it have me add my humor to it have me add different things to it not just go hey this video is popular i'm gonna just stare at my bird and do nothing else the entire time and go ooh ah e ow it makes like yeah i have a habit where if like i'm seeing like jay is messaging me or blah 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 blah, and i'll check my phone real quick and i feel guilty about that but even with, like i'm still listening to the video and if i'm checking a message from somebody i'm still talking that makes me feel guilty if i yeah dude it's like whenever i uh you know leave the room to go take a shit or take my dog out i'm still in the chat watching with you guys i did what you did where you're just sitting in some cases on kick watching tv shows saying nothing it's that's not content that's not content and then there uh, i'm gonna read something that mudahar said real quick and we'll get into that in a second but there was look i'm gonna call her out and if she ends up hating me after this i don't care but <laughs> what else is new i remember i was on twitch and i was just like oh lydia streaming what is she doing she was watching jersey shore and not saying a word a full out flat out copyright well dude let's be honest most people probably weren't even looking at the tv show at that point either the television show which if she was making it transformative she would have the right to watch it i mean i know that major television companies usually don't care about fair use but it wasn't fair use it wasn't fair use it was here this is a reenactment of what she was doing
that's not commentary. That's not reacting. That's you just saying, hey, I'm very popular on this platform. I could just sit here and do nothing and people will throw bits at me. That's what that is. And he, what bothers me about it too, before I get into what Muda said, is you're gonna ruin it for everybody else. I'll walk away and not react to anything anymore and be just fine. Trust me, I'm a creative dude and there'll be plenty of other things that I could do and I'll be okay. But it's people like that that are gonna ruin it because they're just blatantly disregarding copyright because it's easy just to make a buck and not say anything and have a video. Then let the copyright holders go after them. The system is already in place. Well, I don't know. You're doing your fucking nails or you're playing Call of Duty. Now, someone replied to XQC and said this. I'm a fan of React videos, but I feel it's extremely unfair. The original videos provider needs to get a portion of the income from your React videos, 50, 50 or more from him. XQC says they can claim the whole thing and they do a lot of times. I swear you guys. So there you go. They can claim the whole fucking thing and they do a lot of times. So he doesn't even care if they claim it. This is a non-issue. All right, there you go. Whatever channel XQC is reacting to, if you have an issue with him watching your fucking video, just copyright claim the fucking reaction video, make the money from it, and move the fuck on. He doesn't give a fuck. Make it up for the hell of it. My stuff gets re-uploaded for the YouTube frogs that miss the stream. I guess that's what it, YouTube frogs, is that like a thing with him? I don't know. I don't really care about XQC. I care about what he's doing here because it could have a domino effect. Get me contradictory analytics or facts. Anything else is zzzz. Or, dude, have a personality as react to the content. There you go, guys. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Make it transformative. Make Why the fuck are people all of a sudden, like, feeling the need to, like, basically make copyright even more fucking harsh on YouTube? Get your own thing where you're adding a lot of input and don't just sit there scared, staring at the screen, saying blatantly obvious things that makes DSP seem like a poet on his React channel. So again, it, it's that original tweet from XQC. I wonder what triggers people like you so much. Revenue share, audience split, algorithm. I've heard this complaint a million times and most public figures try to attack it from multiple angles just to fall flat on their face. I'm watching a vid I like to my people. My people, oh man. I guess this is what happens when someone just throws a hundred million at you. <laughs> I guess your ego gets a tad inflated. Um, that's it. So his people love when he just sits there and does nothing. Okay, well, th I guess they do because he's wildly successful. But uh, Mudahar, um, who is also very successful, called him out, and I love what he said here. Uh, then they go back and forth. You could go into that. I'm not going to make this video 30 minutes long. Uh, make sure you buy merch at the link below in the description. We have Phil Fat Face shirts. You could have a Phil Fat Face mug if you want. You could start your mornings off with Brian on a different platform. It's intellectually dishonest. Nothing inherently is triggering when you view live content on a different platform. It's when you re up upload the content to the same platform and have it copy the same metadata to further cannibalize. He's right. I get it depends on the creator whose content you're freebooting, but in your own words, just now you claim that you were just sharing a video with your fans with no intention to critique or transform it to fair use purposes. He's dead on. Sexy. We demonize individuals like Jinx back in 2017. Ah, Jinx, who would virtually say absolutely nothing. I don't know who the fuck Jinx is, so yeah, I don't know. You go, ooh, ah, oh my god, I remember Jinx. That was a different time, yet we're still in that time in a weird I don't even know who the fuck Jinx is. ...way to a degree. In large, we do so as well today. This type of content is even frowned upon by YouTube in large any, or any webpage as repetitive and duplicate content. Then why isn't his shit getting deleted? That is true. YouTube will often change its algorithm to fight algorithm abuse of content like this. E.g. Reply Era. Oh my god, the Reply Girls. <laughs> Remember the Reply Girls? Not really. There were a bunch of ugly girls with big boobs just rambling about. It wasn't even about the topic. Like, you couldn't even understand what they were saying. It was like, so yeah, this person uh, had a salad and said a salad and a breast. Salad and breast. Salad breast. Look at my breast. Salad. Breasts. I don't think Leafy's poor now. Unless he blew all of his money. You think I'm kidding. It was a different time on YouTube. There was a time where you could have reply videos to the main video and you would just see ugly women with giant breasts rambling to you. There you go. Um, let's continue. I know you've watched The Dark Knight and animes like Hunter x Hunter. Why not re-upload those as well? Yeah, he's got a point there. Why aren't you uploading the stuff that you know damn well you will get? Not just a claim, a strike on. Where's that stuff, XQC? It's kind of weird that you want White Knight for that, and you'll keep it on kick or whatever. Because YouTube content is uploaded with the Creative Commons license, which is completely different than fucking media. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it displays anymore. But if you look here, um, no, it doesn't. It used to be on YouTube when you would upload, it would say like uploaded under the Creative Commons license in the uh, whatever the fuck description. I don't know if it did. Let me check if it's on mobile that I'm thinking about. I know it used to display. They may not display it anymore. Let's see. Yeah, they may not show it anymore. 
Nope, they don't. But basically, when you upload a YouTube video, you pick how you want to upload it. Hold on. Um, let me see if I can go into one of my videos and change it real quick. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. So you can see right here, learn more about license types and distribution. So when I like did this live stream, it was standard YouTube license distribution everywhere, which if you open up that information, it'll say, let's see. Creative Commons on YouTube, the ability to mark uploaded videos with a Creative Commons license is available to all creators. The standard YouTube license remains the default setting for all uploads. Uh, creative Commons licenses can only be used on 100% original content. If there's a content ID claim on your videos, you cannot mark your video with a Creative Commons license by marking your original video. So basically what it's saying is pretty much... You have to specifically mark your video in order to, like, claim people because it's just assumed to be a public social media post. So, I mean, that's like saying that you have to have permission to scroll through fucking Twitter. It, I don't understand what people expect when you upload a video to fucking YouTube. I don't, I don't YouTube and a fucking TV show are not the same thing. I guess is what I'm getting at. Whatever the hell it is, but everything else is fair game, huh, son? Let's continue. You realize claiming content isn't a task any creator can just do. He's also right about that. That is not true. Anyone can file a copyright claim or strike on YouTube. They have to legally provide that shit. Like, you can literally choose that in the reporting features, even if you don't have a fucking YouTube account. It requires access to elevated content management systems only the larger studios and media groups have. Educate yourself. I'm not a large studio or media group, and I can copyright claim people's videos. So that is, again, not true. Congratulations, Muda. That was Sexy. poetry. But XQC, well, first off, there's nothing like, there's nothing there. It's just great information that Muda had there. He wasn't trying to pepper in, like, big words or anything like that, right? Listen to XQC's reply. This guy is not the brightest bulb that's out there, that's for sure. Uh, here we go. This is what he said. Damn, I knew you liked using big words. What words there were that big, dude? <laughs> I like using big words. What, dude, you could have a... What did Muda say there that was, like, Harvard-level uh, uh, grammar? Please explain it to me. What did he say there? Like, you could have a high school diploma and understand what Buddha said there, but I, I don't know. Maybe you don't even have one of those. Damn, I knew you like using big words so that people would give your takes more importance, but what? But filling your unfounded criticism full of personal attacks, he wasn't personally attacking you, he was stating information, you idiot, and using anecdotal evidence to prove that content is cannibalistic by nature. I get it now. It's all for show. You have no substance. Buddha has no substance, really. Let's compare content. Let's compare your content to Muda's. Let's see who has more substance. I'm not defending Muda. He's a grown-ass man. He can defend himself, but I know it's subjective, too. But come on, dude. I guess it makes sense that you are upset everyone is reacting to actual good content instead of whatever you post. Oh my god! Dude, my editor also was like, yo, I'm watching this guy's stuff because he's putting clips together of you. It's like watching paint dry. You're, you're not even in the... God, it sounds like I'm white knighting for him. Again, he's a grown-ass man, but I'm just telling like, Muda can wipe his ass with your content. He, he, could, he could literally film himself taking a shit, and it would be more engaging than anything that you post. And I've watched enough of it now. Stop it. That's not true at all, man. XQC is popular because of his gaming shit, not because of his reaction stuff. It's time to stop. Little Brother used a 2017 example. Little Brother? 2017 example twice and tried to cash in his win early. This might get you Twitter drone likes, but you know how this works internally. You have the stats to back it up. You didn't use any because you know how it will show the exact opposite of the phenomenon. Also, I talk to most of the YouTubers. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I take big content pieces from to react to. Maybe send daily dose of the internet a call and compare numbers on uploads slash reacts. I'm on the defense, so I'll let you put some stats up. After all, I'm the dumb one, right? Until then, keep molding, little brother. We both know why you posted that tweet in the first place. He posted it because he's tired of people like you just watching stuff like a TV show and getting paid for. Why is he tired about it, though? 
Why does Mudahar care that XQC is making money? Why does it bother him? It's not like XQC is straight up re-uploading Mudahar's content. So why is he getting offended on other people's, like, behalf? I just don't understand this, like, literal crusade against, you know, copyrighted content. This shit is horrible for YouTube as a whole. Encouraging YouTube to crack down on copyrighted content is a fucking terrible thing to suggest for them to do. I don't care if you like the person or not. It is fucking horrible because it's not just going to affect the shit you want it to. For it and not adding anything to it to make it transformative or next to nothing. Maybe that's why he posted it. Insecurity is a bitch, isn't it? Bites when you least expect it and makes you look weak. Oh, God. And Muda's way more successful than me. What the hell is he going to think when he sees this video? Here, he may not pay attention to it because I'm not relevant. That's okay. Also, don't make a money argument type. Okay. I'm probably the one that cares the least about residual YouTube ad revenue. Well, yeah, you just got a $100 million payout. I'm sure you don't care about the ad revenue. It comprises of maybe 1% of my total income. I do it to please my community. You know this already. You just keep pretending you don't. But you're not doing anything. W what is it pleasing them with? Oh, man, you found a video for me. I couldn't click on that video myself. Thank you, XQC. You're my hero. Now write another essay to farm some impressions. Muda doesn't... I, I mean, I, again, it's not that I'm defending him. I, 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 he follows me. I follow him. He gets plenty of impressions. He could say I farted and get 4,000 freaking retweets and likes. I say I farted, I get 20. Wood is fine. He's okay. Now write another essay to farm some impressions. Maybe you generate enough Twitter rev to shut the blank up the next time you wake up and feel like a weak-ass soy boy. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that's all I need to know about this guy. When you say that as an attack, that's... Uh... You fucking cuck! I know that's one of your favorite words, you right-wing asshole. Say, come on, cuck! Ask real fucking questions, cuck! And don't be a fucking pussy, because you're a bigoted asshole, too! I Fuck think you! I'm just gonna say it, since you're talking shit about me with your big fucking ugly mouth, you're all hateful fucking racist bigots! Fuck you and fuck your fucking podcast. Uh, he's gonna be on PragerU soon. Take care. Look, man, Oh, I he's gonna be on PragerU? <laughs> he's gonna be on PragerU? Oh my- Does Rich really think that everyone that disagrees with him is like some fucking ultra right-wing conservative? Yeah, I'm pretty sure XQC is not a fucking conservative, my guy. But, yeah, go off, bro. I know there are people that I already know the reactions I'm going to receive, okay? I've had some interesting <laughs> stuff happen to me on Twitter, and, and, and anyone who's a fanboy <laughs> of anybody or anybody who hates me is going to have a field day with this. But this stuff needs to be said, man. This absolutely needs to be said, that this isn't content. It's not con It's no better Mudahar's right that what Jinx was doing, we went hard on Jinx back in 2017. Because I guess. Who is we? Maybe people were more harsh on him because it was a pre recorded video, but what are these clips, these React clips that their editors are posting? What's the difference between that and Jinx? Like, like I couldn't believe, because I never really watched XQC stuff. I'm not, you know, I'm not his demographic. So, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, come on, it can't be that bad, right? I mean, I react to content. He has to be saying something to have this much of a following for this many people to be watching him. And he's not saying anything. And what's going to happen is, is that eventually YouTube is going to clamp down on this and all of these idiots who make a ton of money just watching other people's stuff and saying nothing. It I mean, Rich, to be fair, you literally just read other people's news articles and then add light commentary over it. So I, I, why are we even having this fucking debate, bro? If anything, YouTube needs to get more relaxed on fucking copyright. Not increase the fucking pressure. This is horrible. No. YouTube needs to stay the fuck out of this shit. Leave it as it is. It's going to screw over everybody. Now, I don't have an issue with people reacting to content, okay? There's been talk show hosts before the internet was a thing, before YouTube was a thing. That's what human beings do. We react to other current events, which usually in turn involve other humans. We And people have played clips on radio shows when other humans have said things and reacted to them. That in and of itself, I don't have an issue with. But when you're just content farming and putting your face in front of it to barely make it transformative just to get clicks on the same content that someone worked their ass off on to produce and you add nothing to it, that's not reacting. That's just you milking your audience dry. And you just can't say it because if you say it XQC, you'll let the mask slip. Sorry, dude. Your React content is garbage, and Mudahar is 100% right. Have a good one. This is Rich at Review Tech USA signing out. Actually, yeah, I, said I don't know, dude. I will never be in support of YouTube making copyright enforcement more fucking harsh. No thanks, because it's never going to stop at where you want it to. 
if they come in and do a complete overhaul of the fucking copyright system, it's going to be worse for everyone, even people who are doing the right thing. So let the people who break the fucking rules go through the legal process, which is already in fucking place. And then, you know, let everybody else just do their own fucking thing. I don't know, man. We need less policing of YouTube and social media in general. Said that backwards because I'm pissed off. You blew it. Make actual. We're watching this shit at 1.5x, so yeah, it's technically 22 minutes, but we're speeding through, man. I ain't got time for all that. So we've got a big update to the Ice Poseidon story. He put out this very strange and scary looking hostage video, and it's resulted in people thinking that he was going to uh, delete himself. It, it's resulted in people thinking that he... <laughs> who the fuck is that? Bro, I'm trying to think who he reminds me of. Fuck. His streaming career is over, but now he's completely saved somehow. Somehow he got himself out of this crazy Damn. situation, and I don't even know how. Yeah, no, this happened like a month ago, and he's been like, I haven't heard any updates on Honestly, because I don't really follow Ice Poseidon. He just kind of like ghosted Twitter, but he posted, this is the last thing that I saw him post on Twitter. Yeah, like last and month. we do have the updates from his Discord, but let's yeah. just watch this. Yeah. I'm being held in Thailand <laughs> for the actions that I've done what? a few nights ago at a hotel in Bangkok, Thailand. I wanted to make this video to apologize to Mrs. Nobra Atsumba and the Bayatri Hotel in Bangkok for the actions that I've done. I did not know the severity of the actions that I have caused, oh. and I, Jesus. Just was, I was just trying to have fun. And I'm sorry. We were drunk. We were in a room. I just didn't understand the. Spirit. We were drunk. We were in a room. <laughs> uh, of, of what I've done, I'm lap dancing on my girlfriend. <laughs> okay. What? And I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry. I did not want to cause any negative actions towards anyone. Who is recording this, by the way? Yeah. To, uh, and what's the hat on the table? That looks like like <laughs> is that Thailand police? Yeah. What, what's going on here? Okay, so that was crazy, right? This looks like it was filmed straight from, like, ISIS themselves or whatever, right? But the backstory is that Ice Poseidon was doing a subathon stream where the more you give money, the longer the stream lasts. He's an IRL streamer, and he's known for his antics. He was in Thailand, right? And apparently he was in a nightclub or, like, a bar or something and decided to perform a lap dance on his girlfriend for the camera, right? And this resulted in him... Bro, what the fuck? Almost losing his life. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Dog, what the fuck? I saw there with the five getting a warning for a 10 second movie clip is already bad. Amen, dude. It is already bad enough. It does not need to get any fucking worse. He's rubbing his ass on her face. Alright, you know what? Maybe honestly, I, I was just gonna say, honestly, probably should be Maybe I should <laughs> the police. What the fuck is this? Is it? Also, there's like 10 cameras on him at once, too. Yeah, what the fuck is going on here? I, was, I thought he was live streaming. There's like 10 other people in here. Dude, this is why these countries hate tourists. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they show up and they do this. And she loves it? This is horrible. What is this? Of course he's wearing Supreme underwear. Oski Waski with the five. He looks like one of those guys from Charlie. <laughs> the Oompa Loompa, kind of, yeah. I don't know what they're called, but you know what I mean, right? Yup. I do indeed, man. Gaming. Sucks like wet dick in a fucking olive garden parking lot. Okay, all right. This is just, you know what? We're turning this off. I can't. No more. All right. Now, here's the thing, right? Thailand, you know, it is a foreign country, obviously, and they don't really fuck around uh, when it comes to stuff like this. All yeah, that's like indecent ex exposure. So, yeah, you're not going to get away with that. Though it is a little bit strange because, you know, Thailand is known for being the sex capital of the world. As a matter of fact, one of their cities, right, uh, Pattaya has reported. Yeah, but you have to go to, like, certain regions. You can't be, like, fucking in underwear and a fucking bra in the middle of a public restaurant. 27,000 prostitutes live there and you might be thinking well, what's the population of the city it's a hundred thousand that's like literally about one like, in five yeah one in five between one and five and one fourth of the population yeah is prostitutes there <laughs> that's <laughs> like in germany right like they have certain areas where it's legal to like have brothels and shit like that but in the rest of the country it's not it's obviously it's illegal i think in, the, in thailand i, I think, think it is yeah i don't but, think they promote this necessarily but again thailand we we all know the, the stereotypical joke yeah i siler it is the sex capital your 400 bucks will go a lot further over there you can get like three chicks at once and everything about lady, you know, boys. lady boys and all this weird shit in thailand and stuff like that right so yeah. it is a little bit surprising to see what almost happened to this guy now immediately when the stunt took place he got yelled at by the staff yeah and we're gonna take a listen to that uh -oh. <laughs> i went to germany i've never been to any foreign country outside of the caribbean and mexico or Canada. So nope, never been to Germany, man. But maybe one day I'll find out. Ha ha ha. 
police man 191, and I would like all of you to go to the police station now. If you are doing something like this, it's unrespectful for Thai culture. No, it's no, not. Doing no, 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 no. It's no, it's not like that. Right? I see the photo, and all of them have CCTV. All right, well, you can check we will make the police report now. Immediately. Oh, wow, now. wow. Okay. What are we doing? We have <laughs> Look at the chat. You are fucked. It's over. <laughs> Arrested <laughs> instantly. And everything Based woman, bro. In the record, okay? You can see me. My name is Thai, General Manager of Bayanti Bangkok. What are you doing if you not respect Thai culture and Thai women? No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not respecting Thai women. Disrespecting Thai culture is very interesting. Like, they're basically loading up, like, the racism charges against him or whatever. Like, you know, he came to a foreign country to disrespect it. Especially in these, like, Asian countries. Dude, yeah, the Asian countries don't fuck around with this type of shit. He's like, you seem like Logan Paul go to Japan and stuff and fuck around and be a dick. Yeah. They do not take that shit kindly. Yeah, all right. Because, no, like, there's the stereotypes about what they are, but I think the ones who don't fit in that stereotype are super angry about when people, like, exploit that stereotype. Yeah. Just use it against them. Exactly. So it's like a 50 50 split where you have, like, the side of Thailand that's, like, the sex capital of the world, and then you have the other side that's like, fuck that. I hate that side. And right. You're disrespectful. And not you're to, like, agree with them or anything like that, yeah. but that's why he's in the situation that he's in. I mean, yeah. this, look, I've heard stories or whatever of, like, you know, Thailand, like, jails and how horrible they are and how oh, they yeah. treat, uh, especially foreign prisoners there. It's not, like, they'll beat you with a can and shit till you can't walk. Like, they are ruthless over there so i'm really surprised that he got himself out of the situation somehow but let's keep watching in the moment don't they hate black people in thailand though not if you got money okay, okay, okay. you'll have to pay extra but extra over there is like you know like paying for an extra patty at five guys this is very serious and my manager is woman also I'm in a meeting with a customer at the rooftop and what are you doing? Can you put it down now or you want to have a case with me? No. We can go to police station now. Can you call? No, no. Give me the now. They are one nine one up. We don't want any calls. Calm down. Calm down. Can, I, can you open the video now? Oh, 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 no one's even oh, really oh, that oh. confrontational. Everyone's just kind of like, oh, <laughs> sorry. Just chilling or something, right? She's like, put that down now. They're so mad. Yeah. Oh, we can pay. Please. I don't care about money. Money is nothing in Thailand, okay? If you not respect Thai <laughs> what? people. What? You have to say something. Oh, shit. Money ain't shit. It's all about the respect. Sorry, I'm by writing now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You will have to write a letter now. Okay, Should I say just leave? Yeah, I would have just left right now. I just put my money on the table and walked out of this place. Yeah. I'm not talking to this person. That's insane. Just trying to have fun. Right it's not fun. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you write down now? And I would like to see your passport. Give me your passport now. Your and passport? You. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> she, she's not the police. I don't... Is this even... I mean, I under, maybe I understand what she's mad, but at the same time, it's like, dang. Really? Dude, don't fuck with an upset Asian lady. They're like intimidated as fuck right now. It's kind of funny. You're not like the cops. What are you doing? Yeah. Can I see all your IDs and your passwords now? She's completely losing her shit right now. You can yeah. open it down. Yeah, I can walk with you too. I don't want you to walk anywhere because the way they behave like that. It's I'm embarrassing. Sorry, I'm sorry. Look, but we are just basically doing ours now. There was no, no, this other. is not yourself. This is public area. Is the hotel restaurant is public area. Yeah, I understand, but there was a no. Yeah, and Chet's even pointing out, like, this legit happened in a private room. It's not like they were in, like, the middle of the restaurant being retarded, <laughs> right? They're in a yeah. private room. They paid for, I would assume. So I don't really see why they're getting so mad. But again, yeah. I guess it's like a different country, different world. There's a there's a very, there's two very different conversations happening here. Like Ice is like, what did I do wrong? I'm just chilling here. And the people that run this place think that he's committed a hate crime against them, which is <laughs> crazy. Insane. Other customers here? It's a lot. It's a lot. But you, we stop are it. And she sounds like she wants to like murder them. Oh. Yeah. This is true. No. Yeah. No, that is unacceptable. Please understand that this is illegal. We understand, but you guys didn't tell us anything, right? No, I tell you now. Okay, so we stop now. Please I want stop. to see the video now. Open it now. No, 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 video. Stop. It's a stop. No, stop. open it. Stop it now. Can you really? give me the right part now? Where is the police man? Illegal things. What is illegal in Thailand? Do you all what you have? You see that everywhere. No, not this You see this everywhere in Thailand. <laughs> She's like, no, no. That's like the worst thing you can say in this moment. Like, yeah. what do you mean? Your country's known for degeneracy. <laughs> that did not make her feel. She no. was going to be like, oh, you're right. Yeah. Right. Sorry about <laughs> no, that. She's not going to calm down and de-escalate and go, like, you're, you're right. Wait, fuck. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, okay. well, we just Where do you come from? Texas. I just have the top CEO of American meeting. The they top CEO of American like meeting. <laughs> what the, the hell are you talking fuck? about? This is crazy. Yeah. In a public like this. I understand, just need... We understand. I'm from oh, Korea. Okay. I'm, I'm friend of a president. Yes. Yeah, I understand. Yes. Government or connected. Yes. I understand. We're yes. normal, right? Yes. I respect. I'm really sorry. If you are Asian, you should not do this thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm also living in Japan. If you live in Japan, yeah, you think that this is okay? It is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Please. Yeah, we didn't know it was going to be Yeah, right. she's like, you live in Japan and you think this is okay? Like, she's calling them out, bruh. Sorry, no, I think she said like she had a top American CEO there, which a lot of American CEOs do visit Thailand for a uh, certain delicacy that, you know, is very unique 
to their uh, country. We're just, you know, we're drinking, we we're drinking alcohol, we thought it was fun, there's no one else in here. Yeah, nobody over here around the beach. Have you ever seen it? Yeah, really? <laughs> Can you have a seat? So she doesn't want them to leave, or? Wow. Don't come talk to me, okay? Have a seat. I can show. I can show. No, I, 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 I chill here. I relax. Very relax here. I, I'm not relaxing you. Try, please, try please, to talk please, to you. Our I, I don't want to hear anymore. Please have a seat. Yo, okay, so Jesus. that's when you know, when she's like, I don't want to hear you anymore, that's when you know it's like your life's over, like yeah. the impending doom here. Yeah, and I think uh, pretty much immediately after this, I think he got thrown in a cell, like right away. Yeah, this whole thing. no, he, he was... did get thrown in a cell, and he talked a little bit about like the prison conditions there, right? And he said, uh, this was before he got his charge dropped, and he said, we all face heavy charges with a lot of jail time. Our bail was almost unavailable, so it's very serious. The bail was like $12,000 for Jesus. everyone. If I get five years, I'm just going to kill myself. I will not be able to survive Thai jail. The jail I was just at only had a bucket with poop already in it. That is just terrible. Yeah. So... For that one minute clip that we just watched, that's, this is the result. This is the result of that, which again, like obviously the clip is like degenerate and stuff, right? But given that it's like Thailand, you would think like just, you know, just based off stereotypes, like, well, this might not be that big of a deal, right? We have some more DMs from the situation. I says here, today is the preliminary. I'm going to plead not guilty. Stream without a shirt. They said I'm disrupting and then it's censored. Since my shirt was off, context matters. I don't know, man. They know it's bullshit. I'm going to go to the media if I'm guilty. I have to go to the station every day. Not only do I have ridiculous charges, but I have evidence of the other side doing horrible things to me in a vulnerable state. What? Now, I guess he's implying this is when he was at jail that he got... Oh, yeah, he says it here in this next yeah. text. Oh, yeah, yeah, right here. One of the people from the other side sexually harassed Kim while detained, and we were physically assaulted while held by non-police. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It's the way that woman was acting. If she was, like, pushing them or telling them to sit down or yeah. assaulting them, I would not be surprised at all. They made her delete the video, but I have enough evidence news outlets will believe me. How to recover video. Eddie says he's happy for my content, and he finds the news articles funny. When all this is over, I have quite the story. The details are fucking, and then it's censored. I'm not the one who is most in trouble. Kim is actually facing the most heat. That's his girlfriend. They actually said her dress was too sexual for the public. What? They said she showed too much breast. I'm not trolling. That is actually insane. <laughs> what Thailand. the fuck? Really? But, you know, like I said, somehow Ice Poseidon, the content god himself, has found- Yeah, but you gotta be in, like, certain regions of Thailand for that type of shit to fly. ...found out a way to get out of this. These are DMs from recently, actually. Yeah. So I met with my lawyer today, and I have good news. The charges have been dropped. This is about a month later, by the way, from the DMs we just read. The charges have been dropped on everyone except Yub since I didn't put him on lawyer retainer. I still have to go to the court, maybe, just because or the process, but we aren't getting any jail. My lawyer's meeting with the police to see if they'll throw the case out so I don't have to wait months until court. So I have no charges, but I still have court. So basically what's going on here is he's, he's stuck in Thailand uh, for months now until he can go to court and officially resolve this uh, investigation here. Yeah. So he's still streaming and uploading content <laughs> as a free man, but he's yeah. kind of like landlocked there for a while, yeah. which is absolutely ridiculous. No, I mean, I don't think, look... We can joke about that. He's <laughs> that's pretty that crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's degenerate. But at the end of the day, it's like really. I mean, no, this, is what he's done. this is what he's done for years as well. He's just this type of person. Yeah. So, but I wonder. I really do. I'm curious about if that uh, apology video where they're like sitting there just coping and also has his full legal name, Paul Danino. I wonder if this was like part of the agreement to like get them out on bail and to drop the charges. It's like we'll drop. It definitely feels like a stage video. They also have their hands tied behind their back. I, I'll, I'll be honest. This sounds like dramatic or whatever. But when I first saw this video and I saw their hands behind their back, I was like, did they get their hands like cut off? Because I know like Holy these shit. countries, you disrespect like the leadership, the religion, anything like that, which obviously. Yeah, bro, you steal in Dubai, they take both of your fucking hands off. That's why they don't have to deal with criminals. They didn't, they didn't do, but they will cut your hands off. Like, yeah. they are strict about all kinds of stuff. I have no idea, man. But, I mean, obviously that didn't happen. I don't know, it, it was just a crazy thing. Because the hat, the, the white room, <laughs> I mean, this is such an ominous <laughs> They both video. look so, like, terrified, too. It's just like, what am I looking at? Yeah, the ironic thing is, though, is Dude, no. In Arab countries, you will lose your fucking hand if you steal. They do not fuck around, bruh. In China, if you steal from a store, it's 10 years of hard labor in a fucking work camp. You all don't understand the rest of the fucking world, man. A lot of other countries out there do not fuck around with this type of behavior. They don't have sympathy for fucking people that break the law at all. Is that this stream series has been wildly successful for Ice Poseidon. In fact, on Kick, he's the fourth biggest streamer right now because of this whole situation. He's averaging 6,000 viewers, and I'm sure uh, Trainwreck over there is like <laughs> totally happy. With, he's totally pleased with what's happened. He's like, yes, give me notoriety great. for my website. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Kick's top streamers, we have Aiden Ross, we have Ice Poseidon. <laughs> Kick is not they're fucking all, around with the content, yeah. I have to admit. They're all doing crazy shit. That's yeah, true. I'm getting news uh, <laughs> and getting coverage for it. Yeah. Next up. It's your returning champion, Elgin Intensity, aka Trapezius Christ, and those are contestants on Jubilee's game show, Odd One Out. In this episode, five feminists have to identify who's pretending to fit in with them. If they vote out the mole, then they split the prize money and five. 
All right, I'm just going to give you a fair warning. Since this is based on a Jubilee video, I may get a copyright warning. Because Jubilee copyrights the shit out of their stuff. Finally earn some dividends on their gender studies degrees. Otherwise, the mole woke fishes his way to a bag instead of a date. Let's see who wins this game of San Francisco squares. What would you say is the most feminist thing about yourself? I believe women should be paid the same across the board, not just white women, but women of color. You can't be a person of color and not believe that women should have the same rights as I. As if women aren't paid the same as men, why does every company on planet Earth hire men still? Get fucking wrecked. I'm a black person, so that's why I'm a feminist, and I believe that women should... Feminism is about women being equal, period. Period. No qualifiers. An NBA player should get the same split as a WNBA player who can't touch the rim and sends the ball to an empty seat. Yeah. For me, it's just like uplifting women's voices for women's rights. I think like a good thing for us to start, like, how do you guys define feminism? Like an advocacy for equity in the institution. Dog, what the rights. fuck is that thing? Well, that too, but... Not just uh, in the economy. <laughs> <laughs> People have zero fucking shame anymore, man. Society, but also in government and other positions of power. Like, I, I looked over and I saw, like, not to hate anyone that wears running shoes, but like, I saw the running shoes and I just assumed. I think that's just like a trope that like a lot of like anti-feminist, like right-wingers dress more for comfort than style. Nobody thinks that. They dress more for comfort than style? Dude, you're literally wearing just a fucking sweater. How is that not comfortable? You look fucking retarded with your little dog collar on. Oski Woski with the five. I saw that documentary about China. You recommended, and honestly, they don't fuck around with anything, not to mention the prison camps they have. Is cra exactly, bro. Like, people really have it very well in the Western world when it comes to punishments for crime. Like, most of the fucking undeveloped world or non-Western countries, they don't fuck around with people that are criminals. They treat them like they are. Criminals, not people that made a mistake. Spore hacker with the two Islam is right about women. Hey, man, if you're a believer in Islam, who am I to judge? You know? Maybe Muhammad and Allah are indeed right. But what do I know? Drag queens wear high heels yet look too comfortable reading stories to little kids. Also, you shouldn't wear a giant vest with your arms exposed unless you're trying to float in the kiddie pool. Hopefully Sweeney is never dressed for that occasion. Besides, both of them are wearing sneakers, as is the Chungus on the left. When I look at her, I don't see a right winger. I see a bingo winger. My eye immediately went to Emma. I was like, that very much could be a conservative woman in this group, just based on her outfit. It was a great outfit. She looked great. Today I learned that it's anti-feminist for a woman to look- That is actually a statistical fact. Conservative women on average are more beautiful than uh, liberal ones, unironically. That's actually a real statistic. Like a woman. It's not anti-algorithm though. The original thumbnail for this video featured Emmett, while the current one features Emma because it'll get more clicks. When you're a woman who looks like Waldo, you're probably used to being hidden. You said something about yeah, let me see if I can find it real eyes. quick. But it's like, it's actually like an uh, actual stat. Here you go. Oh, fuck. I just minimized all my shit because of this stupid fucking thing that Windows changed. Hold on. Bruh. That's so irritating. I don't know why it keeps doing that. But yeah, here you go. Conservative women are more attractive than liberals, but left-wing men have a better poker face according to study using artificial intelligence. So basically what it did is it went through and like scanned the attractiveness of different women with different like political ideologies and the conservative ones were more attractive on average, which is pretty interesting. It's not Daily Mail that like actually did the study. They're just reporting on the study. Can I link it? No, oh, fuck. Um, let me see. Let me find where I was. Here it is. 
Here's one. It's not the same one. I don't know why the same article didn't pop up, but there you go. Scotty man with the two guy looks like he went through his mom. Well, not even his mom's closet. It looks like he stole clothes from his sister. I fully disagree. I feel like feminism, you have to hold women accountable. Like there are women like JK Rowling who like leading and spearheading a transphobia movement in the UK and you can't like hide behind feminism when you are literally hurting women. That NPC looks so much like the main. How is JK Rowling hurting women? In character that I assume she was a fan. Also, Bible thumpers tried to cancel Rowling a long time ago and nothing happened. Good luck stopping a book about wizardry when feminists practice a form of shape-shifting. What do you usually do in instances where you're like shut down by a man in power, you could say? Well, nowadays it's different. Okay. If I was saying a few years ago, I would just kind of like rebuttal and... Recoil? That feel when she can remember her pronouns but not her verbs. Yeah, allow a platform for women to speak. Let their voices be heard because that's the uh, most effective... What platform doesn't allow women to speak? Way to, uh, dismantle Dude, you're not going to fuck any of them. We now turn to the most effective way to dismantle a chair. His speech just seemed very practiced or thought out. It didn't seem natural. In the original video, she spoke the least up to this point. No one should naturally be that fucking fat. And she's criticizing someone's contribution as being unnatural. At least she passes her own test, because there's nothing more natural than a porker being lazy. I think also just putting women in leadership at my work, all of leadership is all women. Yeah. And I feel it's the safest there, yeah. compared to other workplaces where I've been, kind of like duking it out with the boss man kind of thing. I don't believe her, because punching is prohibited in sumo. Also, her shirt says women are magic. In an office full of women who never argue, that magic must be silencio. My bosses are all women too. I, I will say that traditionally I have had issues with women being my boss, but as I've grown. As, as 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 he said he had issues. That she man wanted to dwell in the past. Dude, where the fuck is this thing's like chin? Asked with a dog like Sherman. As I know, but as I've grown, <laughs> and educationally, yeah. now that I know women's roles, and so I agree with you with that assessment that women in leadership, it is just something about it. I, yeah. I feel safer too. In other words, they took a dude built like Uncle Phil and broke him down like Will Smith. I think when people tend to use a lot of dictionary definitions, they were either studying up on it. I mean, you don't have to go Merriam-Webster on us and try to explain it. Here's a dictionary word, misnomer, because his name is Kenyon. Jubilee's next show should be called Five Editors and One Secret Anti-Editor. You know, Emma, she's a little too comfortable and uncomfortable at the same time, if that makes any sense. Easy on the big words, Eric. Comfortable yet uncomfortable makes about as much sense as her testicles, but I don't mean to go Grey's Anatomy on you. I want to expand. I sell it with the five. Aren't a lot of gay people conservative from what I've... Eh. It kind of depends. I don't fucking know, honestly. I have no clue. Uh, I mean, I guess it would depend on what issue you're talking about. But you can't be gay and cons uh, you definitely can be gay and conservative, bro. What the fuck does conservative mean? Because conservative is not Christian. Conservative is a political ideology. So y you can definitely be gay. And conservative. <laughs> Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes is just a fucking retard, man. What is a conservative if gay people can't be conservative? That's the question you need to ask. Because I don't think conservative or liberal or whatever has to do with being gay or straight. It's more so of like... Your political ideology, but yeah, whatever. I don't know, man. Uh, except the ones that have to tell the whole world about it. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is the internet always amplifies the dipshit, so it's always hard to gauge the actual, you know, stats. But I don't know, honestly. I would assume most gay people lean more left, but no idea. Ban what you said. I, <laughs> I'm wondering how you guys feel about trans women in women's sports. I'm down for it. I'm a trans person myself, and I think no. the root of that problem tends to stem like with like we're protecting children, but you can't say you're protecting children if you're kicking out trans children. The controversy surrounds trans women who have considerable biological advantages by growing up male, even after hormone therapy. No trans athletes being excluded, just placed in the right division. Even if you remove all the trans female athletes from a team, there really is no missing woman like Carly Russell. That's one of my biggest problems with like modern day feminism is that it tends to center rich cishet white women, and I'm like, that's weird. No. Except they spent about half of the show about feminism defending men claiming to be women. Their immediate challenge is to identify the mole, but their long-term one is to identify a male. Well, yeah, I just want to see because I was wondering, I don't know how the casting works, I don't know if there's any curves or swerves in the group because I don't determine that to be feminism. Slay. That's not quite what 41% of them do. Slay. I have no problem with about sports and stuff, but I also don't want to silence the J.K. Rawlings of the world because I believe in democracy and I believe to know your enemy, you need, I want them to speak. I don't, that, that's how they used to do things in the old days. That's what the KKK does. They hide their face. Sure. I want to know who they are and I want them to speak freely so you know who the enemy is. Sometimes they get a little violent though but, when it turns but into people, I mean, other but that's, things. I think I understand what you mean. Like you, you agree with free speech, but not I to the point it. where it should like 
restrict someone else. Like you don't, you don't. No, but I, want, I definitely want the J.K. Rawlings and the Marjorie Taylor Greens to talk. I want yeah. them to talk because I want to. They sound there. so stupid. Well, excuse me, but you also want to know who they are. What they're trying to say is that their identities revolve around victimhood. It's the same reason DSP would rather beg than earn easy podcast money. Never be like DSP. I feel like I don't have a clear answer because in like with like kids. Like when you talk about kids doing it, I don't think for children, I think everyone should, like everyone's the same, they have the same strengths and everything like that. DSP but permeates all categories of YouTube content, man. Yeah, doing hair. But once dudes put their wigs on, they leave girls in the dust. I think in like professional sporting situations, I, and I might need to educate myself more. Yeah, you know what they say, man. Men make the best women. On this, so this might be like what I need to come out of today and do, but I, I think trans women still have like more strength than women. Like, but even saying that, like, they're women, but I, I feel like it's not even exactly. She compared trans women to women, uh, referring to cis women as the women, and, like, kind of then referring to trans women as not women. I was like, oh, that might, it might be her. Right, because wanting a level playing field is anti-feminist. I know snap judgments are part of the game, but they should make sense or else someone might vote off the wrong contestant. That x man sparkle energy could ruin Jubilee's game, and I don't mean superpowers. Um, like, they have an advantage, you would say? Yeah, like a slight okay. advantage. So you might be against it, maybe? I mean, see, I don't want to say that, though, because then I'm not really supporting all women. Okay. But, um... Well, if it's professional, let's be honest. If you're good, you're good. <laughs> I think if a transgender woman went up to play tennis against Serena Williams, and it's a transgender woman, she'd probably more likely lose. At the 1998... The spore hacker with the two, was that the good doctor? I have no idea what that means, but maybe. Australian Open, 203rd rank. What is the good doctor? German Karsten Brosch beat Serena Williams and Venus Williams back to back. The only difference between him and a trans woman is his sanity. They weren't playing for high stakes, but Brosch outplayed them so much that when the Williams sisters issued a challenge to a male tennis player again, they revised the ranking requirement from 200 to 350. These contestants are clueless, even by feminist standards. Asking them about fairness in sports is like asking trans women about period cramps. It's a regulated thing, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, a lot of times, let's just be, call it what it is. It's just, yeah, it's, it's like the uh, women's pro soccer team that played the fucking in, like middle schoolers and lost people's religion it's about your ideology your religion yeah. Yeah. and which exactly. again you know has no place in they're shielding your hate yeah because jesus says so more like science says so stevie's dad from malcolm in the middle never read a biology textbook to the end if you don't unconditionally accept trans women then you can't be a feminist or a judge at the miss universe netherlands three that's good two one let's go <laughs> oh there is no yeah. mole <laughs> yeah my bad First impressions, right? Here's the thing. The mole actually never showed up, but we still wanted you all to play the game. Hey. This is a good one. The imposter missed out on an easy payday, given how those brainlets were distracted by shoe choice and big words. Instead, the feminists finally achieved their dream of equal pay, despite technically doing less work. They mentioned letting the enemy talk so that he can be identified. Considering how easily those morons dug their own holes, you should also never interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake. Zero! Like the video and subscribe to the channel, now. What what does a Vietnamese soldier sweating sound like? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh Lee Quang Tran Viet, which I mean I hear the, the sound of distant Hueys as soon as I read that. <laughs> distant Hueys. Yeah. <laughs> that was like Yeah. Do you hear the gunfire? Do you hear the Back Napalm sticks to kids, guys. Like, this is like a stray the round tracers. whistles by your ear. Lee Quang Tran Viet screaming at Bernie babies. I probably class. killed your entire previous generation, except for whoever survived to squeeze you out of their vagina. I probably killed the entire one. Kicked the door in on that thatch hut. <laughs> Hearing that traditional, the traditional song being sung in the distance. <laughs> Spider holes. You want to handle this one? Yeah. Um, if you needed a catchphrase, what would it be? Mm. Is what is his question? I'm gonna just call him Lee so that I don't flip out again. Is that cool? Yeah. That's probably for the best, to be honest. It's fucking hot on the yeah, inbox it's, set it's today. It's warm. Uh, what's what would your like, catchphrase be? Mine would be, "Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy." Here's my number, so call me maybe. Yeah? yeah that sort of rhymed. Yeah, it's weird. I just came up with it just now. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, let's see, what would mine be? Um, your hut, it's made of grass. It won't stop bullets. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> that would be what my...
Steon Story weighs in with, if you were in the Vietnam War, would you rather be a chopper gunner or a guy on the ground with a flamethrower? Chopper, chopper gunner. gunner. Although, I've got to say, there's something that just can't be replaced about being... Yeah, you don't want to be the fucking flamethrower guy. You literally had the biggest target on your back. And one of those poor sons of bitches down there with two tapes of kerosene strapped to your back, liquid fire pouring all over the VC. The man in the dark pajamas, formidable opponent indeed. Popping out of one of his spider holes, soaked with rice paddy. Ain't no human in this world harder to ignite with your flame tosser than one that's been seeping himself neck deep in a rice paddy, wearing one of those little triangular hats. Like supposed to keep the rain off or something. You know, you've been neck deep in muddy, maggoty, malaria ridden water. You poor son bitch, sent you straight to hell with my hellfire. Fight fire with fire, look both ways before you cross the street. Don't you take any wooden nickels, you little VC lunatic. You'd get fucking banned for that shit today. You would not be able to say that shit today. Fuel goes boom with a stray bullet. Yep, either that or, you know, flamethrowers are very prone to misfiring and the flame would just go right back up into the fucking tube and... Bruh. Yeah. No, flamethrowers are extremely fucking unsafe. You don't want to be holding a flamethrower in any context. So. I don't know, dude. Hold up. Let me see. There was something I did want to watch before I hop off. Where were you? Fuck. Dude, I always can't find the fucking videos. Like, I swear to God, they fuck with my sub feed. They always do. Little motherfuckers. What did I want to watch? Shit. Oh, this is what, this is not the video, but check this out. This is really fucking bad. This shit is fucking pathetic, man. This is like one of the worst fucking articles I've read in quite a while. So let's just, let's just skim through this real quick. This is really fucking bad, dude. So it's called Xbox Series X owners slam major change. I'm actually angry. The new Xbox One and Series X home screen update isn't going down well with fans. Apparently no one fucking likes the new dashboard, guys. Fans are angry. I don't think anyone actually dislikes it aside from a couple Redditors, but yeah. Xbox has made a change to the Xbox dashboard, a.k.a. the home screen. Thanks for clearing that up. With a brand new update, some of these tweaks have been praised by Xbox fans, but other changes are being slammed. With the update, one of the largest points of criticism of the previous design has been addressed, which was the screen was too cluttered, preventing users from seeing their background screen. The other biggest point of criticism has not been addressed, though. And the amount of ads, in fact, there seem to be even more now. I agree, I don't like the ads, but the ads have always been there, even since the 360, and the PlayStation 5 also has the same ads, so it is what it is. Uh, let's see, taking to the Xbox Series X Reddit page, one owner of the new Xbox console has pleaded with Xbox to be able to remove 
the most played game section. Unlike the name suggests, this isn't your most played games, it's the most played games by Xbox users, which means it's a constant ad for a handful of games like GTA V and Call of Duty. Oh my god. The horror. Please tell me I can get rid of this, the post reads, ever since the new Xbox home screen update. I have been punished with this awful, unmovable tab titled Most Played Games. This wouldn't be entirely horrible if it contained my most played games, but it doesn't. It contains Xbox's most played games, most of which I don't even own. You're broke! You're fucking poor! The post has only been up a day on a page that isn't mega popular, but it's already attracted 800 comments, almost all of which agree with the sentiment. Overall, Xbox fans aren't a fan of the new dashboard. So, because the majority of 800 comments on a fairly unpopular Reddit page agree with some random guy's comment, everyone fucking hates the dashboard overall. Interesting. Yeah, fuck that. That is major fucking bullshit, dude. <laughs> I hate this new page. What? Wait. I hate this new homepage so much, reads one of these comments, that you're limited to having just two groups on your homepage, and they added tons of crap that I don't want to see. Is such a massive quality of life downgrade. I don't care what the most played games on Xbox are. I don't care what the most played games on Game Pass are. I don't need to see games that are coming soon or have been recently added to Game Pass on my home screen. This home screen is an absolute mess now. What a clusterfuck. It's so bad. I'm actually angry. Oh man, I don't m usually mind Xbox's awful taste in UI, but this... This is unacceptable, adds another comment. Really? Who gives a fuck what everybody else is playing? Oh my god. Obviously they do, because it pisses them off having to see it. As others have pointed out in the same comment section, Xbox was aware of this feedback, because it was provided via the Xbox Insider program, why it's opted to ignore this feedback remains a mystery. Maybe because most people didn't give a fuck. So far, the negative response has not drawn any type of comment from Xbox. If this changes, we'll be sure to update the story accordingly. Well, let me see if I can open this stupid Reddit thing real quick. Alright, yeah, I can. There we go, man. Likely going to have to wait for another update. No, you can't. Insiders have been complaining about it since the first iteration. Have they really, though? Let's see. Genuinely annoyed. I mean, this is naturally going to attract people bitching because the only way you're going to find this shit is if you're, like, literally searching this up. I hate this new homepage so much. Bro, I do too. I think most people actually like the dashboard, right? Do y'all have the dashboard? Hold on, let's do a quick poll. I'm curious. Do you like the new Xbox dashboard? There we go. I think it looks good, personally. I could make a video on this. This would be easy. I mean, honestly, I actually like having the links to the store on the homepage because I'm always looking for the fucking store shit anyway. Like, that's the thing I always hate is when they bury the store. Like, that's the irritating thing about the PlayStation 5 UI is how the store is integrated. It's kind of obnoxious to use. So if they make getting to the store easier, personally, I like that because if I'm not going to my games and apps, I'm going to the store and like, that's literally it. Those are the two things I actually care about on my console. Oh my God. Do 
Dude, Reddit is angry. So it looks like 85% of the chat thinks that the dashboard is good. I mean, like, honestly, let's just see. Uh, do I have YouTube pulled up? Yes, I do. Uh, open link in incognito window. Go. Thank you. There we go. curious I've been used honestly it's okay but my main gripe with the new upgrades they don't give you to take off default pens let's see definitely visually looks better main issue to see the latest post from game of interest what the fuck does that mean the latest post from a game of interest? <laughs> what is that? I don't know. We need customize, wait, customizable folders for a gaming library? Why? It's alphabetical. I was unaware of this update. I miss when the icons and stuff was sharp instead of curved. Okay. It's not a home screen, just a storefront. I like the new UI. Let's see. I don't know, dude. From the tweets I've seen of it on Twitter, it seems to be pretty positive, but maybe the Redditors are right, dude. I don't know. It's like Steam when they announced the new game updates. Is that a thing? <laughs> I've never noticed that on Steam. So like this, the activity page? I mean, doesn't Xbox have something like that? I mean, I don't fucking know. Does it? Dude, the fucking Xbox PC app fucking blows. No, they don't have like a news feed. I don't fucking know. Yeah, no idea, man. I didn't know Xbox even had some shit like that. I thought that was mainly just a Steam thing. Let's see. We knew it was coming, and now it's here. Wish they hadn't done with wait done away with the pinned game backgrounds. I don't know. You can only have two groups. What are these like pinned groups? I must not be using my Xbox dashboard correctly. I don't know, dude. The only thing I give a fuck about is getting into my games quickly and getting to the store quickly, personally. Aside from that, I really don't give a fuck. I have never grouped video games, pinned video games, sorted video games. I just literally go to, like, all library and then go to the fucking game I want to play. I don't know, man. I need to play around, I guess, with the dashboard. I haven't turned my Xbox on in a couple days, so maybe I have it. But, yeah. I still feel like I should make a video on this article because this is fucking retarded. Absolutely fucking retarded. Yeah, the Xbox dashboards have always had ads, though. Even on the 360. I mean, the PlayStation 4 has ads on it. The fucking PlayStation 5 dashboard has ads on it. Like, it's nothing new. I mean, what do they think the what friends are playing section of a dashboard is? It's a fucking ad to get you to go and buy the games that your friends are playing. Like, duh. <laughs> like, I don't know. This just kind of seems like a big fat nothing in my opinion. So let's see. Blue sent you with a two. Just finished Dragon Quest Eleven. It took forever. Yup. That game is very, very lengthy. 
I mean, I've never beaten Dragon Quest XI, and I have how many hours? Where are you? 70. Shit, man. See, I'm like at the very end of the game, though. Awarded for being fully prepared for the ultimate fight. Hell yeah, dude. But, yeah. I'm like at the end game, and I hit a huge fucking grind wall, so I just stopped playing it. <laughs> because it felt like a chore. So I was like, eh, I'm good. What game do you have the most hours on? Uh, MCC. I have 1,400. Oski Woski with the five. Aside Fortnite, I played a lot of those games that are shown there. I don't see the big deal, especially COD, who is actually bitching about that. Exactly, man. The Xbox fanboys should be all excited about that shit. Call of Duty being front and center. Sucks like wet dick in a fucking Olive Garden parking lot. Yeah, I have, I think, 1,400 hours in MCC, just under 1,000 hours in CSGO Surf, and then 800 and something in Call of Duty. Eight hundred and sixty-nine. Nice. So, yeah. Those are my uh, three most played games. Yeah. Let's see. Games. Yeah, so there you go. About 1,400 hours on MCC, 998 on CSGO Surf, 869, 324, 200 on Valheim, 183 on Elden Wing, 156 on Halo Infinite, 71 on Odyssey. Trash. I regret every hour I spent on that garbage. Uh, Dragon Quest, I got 70... Lost Ark, 68. This game was actually really fun. Uh, Borderlands 2, 60. Fallout 4, 53. New World, 52. Final Fantasy, 15. But yeah, those are the games I've played the most. But yeah, total on MCC, if you count my Steam and Xbox hours, I have uh, 2,400 so I have a thousand hours on the Xbox version of MCC and then 1400 on PC. So I have 2400 hours in MCC total. Uh, King Samuel with the two, I clocked about 3070 hours in Team Fortress 2. Nice, man. And Laura Pothead Investor with the five. I'm not proud of it, but my most played game is The Witcher 3, over 1,200 hours at least. I mean, I don't know. That's not a bad game. It's not a terrible game to spend a lot of time in. But this this will give you an idea of how few games I actually beat, guys. Like, so we start getting down into here. I did actually beat this. but uh, We start getting down into the games I've never actually beaten. And this is where the list gets very lengthy. Let's see. Just with zero play time, let's see where that starts. Um, you can see, like, all these games I've played for, like, an hour and then never touched again. <laughs> it's a really bad habit, dude. Honestly. It's a really bad habit. I used to just buy games, play them for like three minutes, and then never touch it again. But yeah, here you go. These are the games that I have not played.
So if you guys are wondering why I no longer buy video games, here's the answer. I have so much shit that I have bought over the years that I have never even fucking touched. We're still going. All right, we got to be getting close to the bottom. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so just, like, combine that with all the games I have, like, less than 10 hours in. It's, like, literally the majority of my fucking account. Like, see, 481 games owned. And, yeah. Can you, like, click on that to see the stat? Oh, no. I just wanted to see if, um... They had, like, played versus unplayed stats, but nope. But, yeah. <laughs> I could have a lot more games. I just don't redeem all the junk that I get from, like, Humble Bundle and shit that I know I will never touch, even though I know I'm not going to touch most. Which reminds me, I need to see what the uh, Humble Bundle games are for this month that I paid for. Let's see. The Outer Worlds Spacers Choice Edition, Tem Tem, Yakuza 4, Road Warden, Kraken Academy, Merchant of the Skies, Ozzy Mandius, which is Ramses, by the way, from Ancient Egypt. I don't know what the fuck that is. Ozzy Mandius Bronze Age Empire Sim. Yeah, I'm sure that's an absolute banger. Shotgun King, the final checkmate. Oh, boy. Yeah. Humble Bundle really delivering that heat, bruh. Glad I pay for that shit. Really glad I spend money on that shit. I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and hop off, guys. It's like almost 3 o'clock for me. So I'm going to go to bed. Have a uh, wonderful Monday, everybody. Appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Big ups to everybody in the chat. Appreciate all the support as well. Hopefully y'all have a uh, great start to your weeks. And I will talk to y'all later. Peace out, everybody.